Episode 141. Did Mr. Bennett avenge you? Did Mr. Bennett avenge you? I didn't hear him mention this. I'll call him and ask. April quickly washed her face, then called Aaron. Did you miss me? His proud and sexy voice sounded. What are people discussing online? I want to know if you did that to Rosaria, she said hurriedly. Yes, Aaron chuckled and said. Didn't you mention the fantasy club earlier? I asked Marvin to do some digging. Isaac tried to destroy all the evidence, but he failed to destroy it all. After all, this is Rosewood City. The police kept the surveillance video as a record. I pulled some strings and got the video. I wanted to release the pictures of all the people who were on the scene that night. But then, I felt that if only your face was covered with mosaics, people might take guesses. So, I only kept the pictures of Rosaria and Mr. Lennox. April was so touched that she didn't even know what to say. He went against Rosaria and the ones who bullied her without letting her know. She thought carefully, then realized that she hadn't really done anything for him. Aaron, thank you. Why are you thanking me? Aaron wasn't happy with her words. Some people bullied my woman, so I avenged her. It's my responsibility to protect you. If you really wanted to thank me, come to the Christmas show. You just said that I didn't need to thank you. That... Please don't give me any difficulty. April gave a bitter smile. He hadn't mentioned the show recently, so she thought that he had forgotten it long ago. I knew it. In your heart, I'm just not as important as that boy toy, he said. Boy toy? Who? April didn't understand. You know who, he said. April now realized that he was talking about Ryan. It's not like that. You're definitely the most important person to me. He's not even as important as a single strand of hair of yours. I like you the most. You do. The man on the other side of the phone immediately sounded happy. Never mind. I'll just tolerate you this time, but only this time. Okay, April nearly burst into laughter. She had just found that Mr. Bennett was quite easy to deal with. To make him happy, she only needed to sweet-talk him as much as possible. At City View International, Rosaria came back with a sad look, saying, Isaac, you have to help me. This morning at the filming site, I was surrounded by reporters. The security people made a path for me to leave with some real effort. The director said that I can't go to the filming site for the next few days. Isaac, who was sitting on the couch and talking to Clark, glanced at her. His handsome face wore an obvious dislike as he said, That's all because you're stupid. If you didn't meet Mr. Lennox that day, those pictures wouldn't even exist. Now you've brought the whole company into trouble. Clark added silently, We were preparing to sign a contract with Neville Charleston, who's famous because of his costume dramas. But because of what happened this morning, he refused to sign the contract. A talent show jointly organized by our company and a TV station has also been postponed indefinitely by the TV station. Rosaria gave a start, her face paling. It must have something to do with April. She hooked up with Aaron and now she's taking revenge on us. There is no us. Isaac stood up and said he really wanted to throw her away, yet now they were on the same boat. Your meeting with Mr. Lennox is a fact that we can't deny. The company will arrange a press conference for you immediately. You need to make it clear that you didn't know what kind of a person Mr. Lennox was. You were tricked by Mr. Lennox. He started touching your hands when you went in, so you excused yourself. You didn't stay for long. You were thrilled that he was arrested. But what if they showed the CCTV footage? Rosaria was scared, though she was more worried that Isaac would find out that she hadn't brought April along when she left. Aaron wouldn't do that. He purposely blurred out April's face. It shows that he didn't want to involve her. In our day and age, it's too easy to find someone on social media. It'd be too risky to put her face up as well. Isaac's face darkened as he could tell how protective Aaron was over April. Rosaria absolutely detested April. She was jealous of her family background back in the day as well. Now that Kenneth Eisenberg had fallen, Aaron appeared. The Bennett family was on another level. She certainly couldn't allow April to marry into that family. She glanced at Isaac pitifully. Isaac, I think Aaron is only just getting started. He wouldn't let us off so easily. The Bennett family is too powerful. We should come up with a plan. I heard that Aaron made Marianne go bungee jumping when he wanted to teach her a lesson on April's behalf. Aaron's grandparents both hate her to the core. Isaac looked at her coldly. She deserved it. It was definitely her fault when the platform collapsed that night. Rosaria looked at him and said quietly, I, I thought we could work together with the Flanders family since we have a common enemy. Isaac knitted his brows as he mulled over her words. Clark interjected, Mr. Davidson, we should return to Lukesville. 
We've incurred quite a loss from this incident. We need you at the company to hold things together. Okay. Over the next couple of days, April watched the news of the entertainment industry. After Rosaria held a press conference to defend herself, the opinions of the netizens were widely divided. It was a pity that the news of a pop star idol dating his manager took over as the number one search topic. Heston Bloomington was extremely popular, and when his relationship was revealed, it instantly took over the headlines of major forums and websites. On the way to school, Winnie remarked, The Davidson Group is really something. They managed to find that kind of news to shift the public's attention. Rosaria has many fans. She won't be taken down so easily, April said, disappointed. However, she wasn't the most disappointed party. It had been difficult for Aaron to dig out that evidence. It seemed like his strategy hadn't worked. She proceeded to make a call to Aaron. I knew this was going to happen from the beginning. The Davidson Group is a huge entertainment company. They control several entertainment reporters, and they have a strong public relations team. Aaron smiled and didn't seem bothered by the situation one bit. Rosaria is not my ultimate target. April was shocked. You are trying to shake the Davidson Group? No. I'm going after Regalia Film Studio. April, taken aback, recalled Richard telling her about purchasing Regalia Film Studio. Isaac had wanted to buy the company. If he had really managed to do that, he would have even greater influence in the industry. Remember Isaac's company came to look for me last year? I talked to him for quite a while. I realized then that he had greater ambitions than becoming the boss of an entertainment company. He wanted to create a Hollywood sensation. Episode 142 if she acts aggressively, he'll enjoy it. April breathed deeply as she could scarcely believe that Isaac was actually so ambitious. I never heard him mention all this, she said. Aaron snorted and said, People are greedy. After attaining Eisenberg Group, he only wanted to expand his business. Normal successes won't satisfy him. I get it, April said knowingly. So this time your final goal is to hurt the Davidson Group's reputation so he can't purchase Regalia Film? Not only that, I'm also targeting the film and television base he is building. I can't possibly build it alone. There are many other shareholders. What happened this time is like a lever, which can slightly shake the shareholders' confidence towards Isaac. In that case, I'll be able to avail myself of the opportunity to purchase the stock right of the film and television base. April honestly admired Aaron for how thoughtful he was. Normally, he was arrogant and narcissistic, but in the business world, he was admirable indeed. No wonder he had made Arrington so huge. Why didn't you say anything? Don't you admire your husband? Aaron chuckled proudly. April blushed, glanced at Winnie, slowed down her pace and said with a low voice, When did you become my husband? Sooner or later, didn't you say that you'd give me your first time? I'll certainly be responsible to you then, said Aaron with a happy voice. Enough of that. The day after tomorrow, fly to L.A. and attend a charity activity with me. Will we spend the night there? April asked without thinking. Happy, right? You can get me into your bed again. Aaron sounded thrilled. Didn't you hate being carried in my arms before? Now you sound excited, said April speechlessly. After you became my girlfriend, it has become the spice of our relationship. April looked at the sky, the corner of her mouth twitching. She was right. Aaron was a masochist. She began wondering if he would always enjoy it if she acted aggressively in bed. All right, I'll come and get you the day after tomorrow. After ending the call, April found that she had unwittingly walked into the campus. Winnie turned back and asked, Are you going out with Mr. Bennett? April told her about traveling to L.A. Winnie gave her a mysterious smile and then asked, Do you want me to buy you some condoms? April pinched her arm, feeling shy. They laughed until finding themselves face to face with Marianne, Kathy, and Esther Warhol. It had been only a few days. Marianne seemed to have lost some weight, looking sallow and pitiful. April might have felt sorry for her if she did know that Marianne tried to sow discord between her and Annie, and if she wasn't staring at her with such a vicious look. After all, April clearly remembered how she was pushed down the bridge that night. You. Seeing April, the look in Kathy's face changed. She rushed up to hurl a slap towards April's face. April hurriedly raised a hand to defend herself and grabbed Kathy's hand. She was strong. Kathy struggled, but failed to free herself from April's grasp. She looked out of the corner of her eyes and saw that Esther was walking over. Then she clenched her teeth and bent her legs deeply. Ouch! She fell to the ground. Both April and Winnie were shocked. Mom! 
Marianne hurriedly came up to help Kathy. Wait, wait, I sprained my ankle when she pushed me. Kathy raised her head, showing a painful look, saying, April Eisenberg, don't go too far. You bullied my daughter, and now you're trying to hurt me? Aunt, look, she disrespected us because Aaron is helping her. She pushed me so hard. If she married Aaron, will there ever be a place for the Flanters family? April, I have never met anyone as ill-mannered as you are. No wonder you are the daughter of your father, Esther said angrily as she looked at Kathy's red and swollen foot. Kathy was her niece after all, and April Eisenberg was disregarding her in front of her aunt. I'm telling you, as long as I am Aaron's grandmother, I would never allow you into the Bennett family. She huffed as she helped Kathy up with Marianne. I didn't push her. She fell down, April said anxiously. She was shocked that Kathy would do such a thing at her age. I fell down myself. Kathy pointed a finger at her and laughed. You think I would do such a thing at my age? You don't dare to admit to what you've done. Winnie laughed coldly. Auntie, I have to ask you, aren't you ashamed trying to frame someone so much younger than you are? Grand Auntie, she is my roommate. Marianne pointed at Winnie. She stole my resources from the recording company. She even stole the lead role in the school musical for me. This is too much. Aaron must be blind. I won't let you off so easily. Esther glared nastily at April and Winnie. Marianne, hold on to your mother. Let's go to the hospital. Esther walked away angrily with them. April picked up her pace and ran after them. After a while, she stopped in her tracks. Esther didn't believe a word she said. There was no point explaining herself. You're going to have trouble now. Mr. Bennett's grandma seems to be very upset. Winnie frowned and said worriedly, If the old people make a fuss about it, there's no way Mr. Bennett can completely ignore their protests. April was having a headache. Do you think Aaron would misunderstand me as well? I don't think so. Winnie winked. He would just be angry that the Flanders family had put on a better show than he did. Winnie made perfect sense. At the Arrington office, Aaron sat with his foot across his other leg as he discussed matters with his financial officer. When he picked up Esther's call, he could hear the anger in her voice. Come to the hospital immediately. Your girlfriend is so disrespectful. She pushed your auntie onto the ground and she sprained her ankle. I've never met someone as ill-mannered as her in my life. Aaron frowned. Is there some sort of misunderstanding? April would never do that. I saw it with my own eyes. Why would I frame a young girl? Auntie must have done something nasty to her then. No one did anything. We were just sending Marianne to school. Your auntie wanted to hit her for all the misery Marianne was put through. Good for her, striking first. She could have just shielded herself. Why did she have to push her to the ground? Erin was quiet on the line. The Flanders family was the cause of the trouble in the first place. I give it to you guys, shutting things down with three million dollars. But I thought they knew their mistakes. Seems like they are completely unremorseful. I'm telling you that April was being disrespectful to her elders. Are you brainwashed by her? Esther was so angry that she almost fainted. She hit my niece in front of me. Grandma, you should not tolerate the Flanders family's nonsense any further. Episode 143. Is it my fault that I'm too handsome? Am I not allowed to say anything when my niece is hurt? Esther got angry. Aaron, I'm serious. If you insist on being with her, you'll never be allowed in the house of your grandpa and me. And don't make me go talk to the Bennett family. I wasn't going to talk to them for the rest of my life. The look in Aaron's face finally changed a little. The Bennett family people had wished that David and Caitlin Bennett could get back together, but sadly, the Morrison family had been giving the Bennett family the cold shoulder all these years. So if Esther talked to the Bennett family, the Bennett family people would join her side immediately. All right. If you're not afraid that my mom might get mad, you can do it. I'm still busy. I'll talk to you later. Aaron ended the call. Five minutes later, his phone rang again. This time, it was April. I didn't push your auntie. April started explaining once the call was answered as she guessed that Esther must have called Aaron and told him about what happened. It'll be all right, even if you did push her. It would be best if you disabled her so she wouldn't be able to bring me trouble all day. What? April believed that if she did that, Aaron's grandma would kill her. I really didn't push her, no matter how she is an elder of mine. April continued. Um, I'm guessing that Aunt Kathy is running the wrong kind of business. Aaron took a deep breath to calm himself down. When I take over the YCC group, I'll fire her. Try persuading her to be an actor. I believe that she'll be good at acting. However, she's a little old, so I guess I could only play a mean mother-in-law or something like that. April was a little worried, but after hearing Aaron's words, she laughed. But shortly after, she started to worry again. There was a big misunderstanding this time. 
Your grandma won't allow you to marry me no matter what, she said. Have you decided to marry me? Aaron chuckled and said. It's all right. We can do something that can't be undone. Let's make a baby, and after that, no one will be able to do anything to you. I'm done talking to you. The embarrassed April ended the call. If she knew that he would say that, she wouldn't have made the call. Aaron smiled at his phone, then immediately switched to his normal, cold, and proud look and turned to the investment director. He said, Where were we? Please, continue. The investment director was surprised by how quickly the look in his face changed. Saturday, April went downstairs with her bag. In the parking lot, Aaron was leaning against the expensive Maybach. She hadn't seen him in two days. He had cut his hair short and now looked clean and refreshed. His handsome face was entirely exposed, looking more mature than before. Today, he was wearing a blue blazer and a retro-style silk scarf. He looked like an elegant gentleman. April had rarely seen a man who looked so good with a scarf. The people passing by all turned back to look at him. A little girl, looking six or seven years old, who was holding her father's hand, said to him when walking past Aaron, Daddy, that man is so handsome. Why aren't you as handsome as him? Handsome men are all unreliable. The dad unhappily glanced at Aaron. April smiled and walked to Aaron. Jealousy made that father's face ugly. If his daughter only dates ugly men in the future, who will be responsible for her life then? Asked Aaron. April responded with, He didn't mean that. Don't take it seriously. I have to. What if you also think that I'm too handsome and unreliable? He snorted and continued. Is it my fault I'm this handsome? My parents have good genes. What can I possibly do about it? April didn't know what to say. April looked up. Why did you change your hairstyle? Yeah, is it nice? Aaron looked at her seductively. He was obviously fishing for compliments. April was on the brink of bursting into laughter. She had never met a man as needy as him. Nice. You're modeling the David Beckham style, aren't you? I've seen it on him before. Aaron's face fell. Oh, really? The hairstylist didn't tell me that. But I bet David Beckham didn't look as good as me. Yes, yes, you are the most perfect. April opened the car door. But you don't have to be upset. The Beckhams are so happy together. Four kids and a beautiful wife. He's loyal and faithful despite his good looks. Let's have five kids in the future then. Aaron grinned and grabbed her waist and planted a kiss on her cheek. Don't worry, I won't fool around either. April blushed. I don't mean that. If we want to have five kids, shouldn't we start early? Aaron babbled. Look, the fastest we can go is one in two years. You can't go too fast. You'll have to recuperate and heal. And that'll take us ten years in total, even longer if you do a C-section. Who said I was going to have five kids with you? I'm not a suckling pig, okay? April was going crazy, and to think that the chauffeur was listening to their entire conversation. You can decide how many children to have then. I just want children in general. April was already feeling tired after only meeting him for five minutes. He wasn't listening to her. Stop talking about it or I'm going to leave. Okay, Aaron rubbed her cheeks affectionately. She was so cute when she was flustered. When they got onto the vehicle, the chauffeur turned and introduced himself. Hi, Ariel. Master Richard, April was shocked. Are you going too? Yeah, they invited me as well. Richard gave her a bright smile. The organizers mainly wanted to invite me. They only invited him as well out of courtesy, Aaron said as he pulled out the breakfast that Sister Emily had made. He didn't have to go, but he is probably too free. He's going to pick up chicks there. Richard glared at him and addressed April. Don't call me Mr. Richard next time. We seem too distant. Just call me Rich. Before April could nod, Aaron laughed sarcastically. You're not allowed to. She doesn't even call me Ronnie. Richard's expression was dull. Call me Richie then. You think I'll allow that? Aaron scoffed. There was a brief pause. Richard, then, Aaron concluded. That's just too much, Richard said angrily. You already have a Richard at home. Yeah, you really are too much, April said empathetically. I'll call you Rich. As for you, you desperately need to get a life. Aaron looked at her sadly. We've kissed, slept together, and hugged each other, and you still treat me so. You have quite a cruel heart. April was blushing. Who slept with you? Don't spout nonsense. All right, I'm deaf. I can't hear anything, Richard said as he plugged his ears. I know you've done more than sleeping together. I know you two have done the oral and the hand stuff, too, Richard thought to himself. Episode 144. The first time they traveled together. Are we not leaving yet? Isn't our plane taking off at 11 o'clock? April reminded him, feeling a little tired. Hearing her, Richard started the car. At the airport, the three of them used the VIP channel. 
When going through the security check the airport, staff asked April to open her bag. Thankfully, to avoid an embarrassing situation, she had packed her clothes in paper bags before leaving. However, when the airport staff found a red box of condoms, she was dumbfounded. Aaron and Richard, who stood by her side, both fixed their eyes on the box. Richard chuckled, pushing Aaron slightly. Aaron ignored her, but took the box from the airport staff's hands, glanced at it, then calmly put it back into April's bag. As the bag was zipped up, Aaron gave a meaningful smile and glanced at her. April felt that even the bottoms of her feet were burning. She honestly didn't understand where that box came from, but then she recalled the last time when he had asked her if she needed to bring some condoms. This morning when she came out of the bathroom, she saw Winnie walking out from her room. She thought that Winnie was borrowing her makeup, but now she guessed. The airport staff glanced at Aaron and April with a meaningful look, then pushed the bag back to April. All right, it's done. You may go in. The blushing April grabbed the bag and quickly walked inside. She only wanted to leave this place as soon as possible as she felt terribly embarrassed. After resting for 20 minutes in the VIP lounge, they boarded and ended up in the first class cabin. Aaron and April sat in the first row while Richard sat behind them. After buckling up, Aaron turned, curved his lips into a smile, and then said to April, What does ultra thin mean? Hmm? April was confused. You're pretending. You art school students just love pretending. Aaron happily pinched her cheeks and said, Fortunately, I know you well enough. You're shy on the outside, but wild on the inside. April had a bad feeling. What are you talking about? The red box, apricot. Aaron chuckled and said, I saw the word super thin on the box. I don't quite understand. Can you explain it for me? April wanted to cry, but failed to shed any tears. She thought that he wouldn't mention it, but to her surprise, if you don't know what it means, how am I supposed to know? She asked. You bought it, so how can you not know? Aaron was thrilled. April had been telling him that she wouldn't sleep with him before marrying him, but in fact, she sneakily hid a box of condoms in her back when they traveled together for the first time. He began wondering if April refused premarital sex because she wanted to marry him as soon as possible. She's such a liar. She said that she's too young to marry, but I guess that's just a scheme of hers. I didn't buy it. Winnie put it in my bag without letting me know, April explained. Don't explain. I get it. Aaron nodded smilingly. He always made Sister Emily take the blame, and now she was doing the same to Winnie. You do? Really? April looked at him, feeling that his burning gaze was about to strip her. Yes. Aaron nodded and responded with, Since you don't want to tell me, I'll just Google the meaning of ultra-thin online. April wanted to die. You know nothing. She picked up her phone and messaged Winnie. She didn't think that the innocent-looking Winnie would sneakily buy something like condoms. Winnie soon replied, You found it so soon. Yeah, I put it in your bag just in case. I think Mr. Bennett will definitely do something interesting. April's cheeks felt hot. Frankly, she didn't have a clue what Aaron would say or do next because he was just too unpredictable and thick-skinned. Winnie replied via text, Open it and leave one in your pocket just in case things get too heated. April hit reply, You would know. Winnie, I read it online. I've searched it up. Aaron walked over with his phone in his hands. Ultra thin sounds extremely passionate, don't you think? It's one of the thinnest options that this brand offers, but the 003 is their thinnest. Online reviews say that it isn't the most popular brand now, though. Spasmgasm is the best. She wanted to kill herself. Aaron continued, Shall we consider spasmgasm? We can get a pack when we reach L.A. Speak any more and I will get off the plane right away, April threatened him. Aaron blinked his eyes. He discovered a phenomenon that he observed in people who were secretly coy. They were all extremely bashful. All right, he would go get them later by himself then. When he was finally quiet, April put her earphones and closed her eyes. She let the music peacefully drift into her ears. Not before long, she had fallen asleep. She was only awakened when the air stewardess served the in-flight meal. The first-class meal was scrumptious, and after she had a couple of bites, she noticed that Aaron wasn't touching his food at all. Why aren't you eating? She remarked. It's so bad, your cooking is much better, replied Aaron. April was speechless. When they arrived at L.A., they got off the plane, and Aaron led the way with brisk steps. April turned behind and saw Richard struggling to keep up with them as he squeezed past other passengers. Slow down. Let's wait for Rich. Aaron slowed down and looked behind them. Oh, right. I nearly forgot. No wonder I felt as if I had lost something. Richard approached them, and he heard what Aaron had said and replied indignantly. I'm not a thing, okay? Of course, I know that. Aaron looked at him condescendingly. Richard was livid. Fine. You win. You always win. April turned to look at Richard sympathetically. 
Which, you are the most magnanimous person I know. I think so, too. Richard nodded his head. Aaron frowned at April. April blinked and said, The fact that he didn't decide to cut off all ties with you is evidence that he has a big heart. He doesn't hold grudges and he's easygoing. What more do you want? Aaron stopped in his tracks and said with a displeased tone, You are my woman, so shouldn't you take my side? Why are you speaking for him? Stop complimenting him this way. You've never even praised me like that before. Do you fancy him? April's eyes widened in disbelief. Richard felt like he was being completely disregarded by Aaron, but added curiously, What would you do if she fancies me? You are my longtime buddy, after all, and she is my woman. I wouldn't be too harsh. At most, I'd break your legs and throw you guys to opposite poles of the earth, never to meet again. Aaron looked at them emotionlessly. I'm being kind here. April and Richard shuddered in unison. He said he was being kind. All right, cut it out. April held onto his arms tightly. I was just teasing you back there. Don't overthink it. Episode 145. Wouldn't it be a shame if nothing happened in such a huge bed? Ugh, thank God. I thought your taste became poor again. Aaron nodded. Richard clenched his teeth in anger. I should have just taken his girlfriend away. After leaving the airport, Mr. Robbins from the branch office in L.A. escorted the three of them to a grand hotel. When checking in, April pulled Aaron's sleeve and said, I need an extra room. Aaron turned to Mr. Robbins. Mr. Robbins explained, The charity party is taking place in this hotel. All the rooms have been booked already, but Ms. Eisenberg, you don't need to worry because the organizer has prepared a Riverview suite for Mr. Bennett and Mr. Jones each, and one suite includes four bedrooms. April gave herself a bitter smile. Left alone with four bedrooms? She might not be able to escape Aaron even if there were 40 bedrooms. April felt a little strange, as such a huge hotel actually didn't have any available room. You see, I can't do anything about it, Aaron spread his hands innocently and said, but it's not a bad thing. If you sleep alone, I'll worry. Staying with you is more unsafe for me, she silently grumbled. Richard, who stood aside Aaron, couldn't help but roll his eyes. Yesterday afternoon in the CEO's office, he heard Aaron telling Marvin to book all the empty rooms in this hotel, and now he understood why. Do you have to pretend to be like this? You've brought condoms. Mr. Robbins handed the room keys to Aaron and Richard and then said to Aaron, Mr. Bennett, the full dress and stylist you asked for already. When Ms. Eisenberg is rested, I'll send the dress to your room. Okay, Aaron responded. He held April's hands and went upstairs. The Riverview suite was about an 800-foot square with multiple French windows. However, once in, April found that the bathroom was transparent and that made her feel awkward. Richard stepped in and said, This place is not bad. However, once he set foot in the room, Aaron immediately turned back and said to him, Why don't you go back to your own room? Really? So mean. Little Benny, you followed me everywhere when you were single, but now you're always trying to drive me away as if I was a fly. Is this really appropriate? Haven't you thought about how cold and lonely I might feel in that giant suite alone? I haven't. When Richard heard Aaron's response, his stomach ached. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Richard, it's really a surprise that you two will attend our charity party. At that moment, Mr. Warren, the organizer, gently knocked on the door, then walked in excitedly and said, It's such an honor. Richard raised his eyebrows and gave Aaron a sideways glance. I know you want to spend time with April alone, but now that's not going to happen. As the three of them talked, April took the opportunity to check all the bedrooms, then picked one with the best view. To avoid Aaron sneaking into her room at night, she even took the key. After she lay on the bed for about half an hour, Aaron walked in, smiled, and said, This room is perfect. Yeah, it's good. There's a nice view. April nodded. I mean the bed, Aaron sat on the bed saying, So large, six feet wide. I don't think so. April had a bad feeling. As she thought in the next moment, Aaron stared at her right in the eye and said, Four feet and a half at least. It would be a shame if nothing happened in such a huge bed. April blushed immediately. In your dreams. She rolled her eyes toward him. Then what should we do with your condoms? They'll expire if you don't use them. Aaron blinked his eyes innocently. April had to hand it to him. Expiring condoms. They're good for three years. Hmm, you know so much. I don't really know about these things. Aaron frowned and appeared to be vexed. It's not good to keep them for too long, is it? I just like to keep them. You have a problem with that? Don't speak to me. I need to rest. April wanted to cut the conversation short in case things got too scandalous again. She covered herself with the duvet and ignored him. 
All right, let's not talk about it anymore. Don't cover yourself. It's not good for your ventilation. Erin laid down on the bed and pulled the duvet down. The stylist is coming. She's going to pick out your outfit and do your makeup. April was incredibly stressed. I wouldn't have come if I had known that it was going to be so grand. I'm on an unlucky streak when it comes to events like these. She had been either humiliated or physically hurt, and she was traumatized after that series of unfortunate events. Don't worry, you've got me tonight. Aaron held her hands gently. There'll be a good show to watch. What show? Aaron grinned and said mysteriously, You'll find out. Whenever you say that, it means that you'll be teaching some scumbag a lesson. Is that the show we'll be watching tonight? April asked. Aaron's expression froze. Don't tell me I got it right. April froze too. Who are you targeting tonight? You've already gotten Marianne and Max. Are you going after Rosaria and Isaac tonight? Are they even in L.A.? Enough. You'll find out eventually, Aaron said in frustration. He felt like he had just lost the element of surprise. Is it really them? April knew she'd hit the jackpot. She felt a whirlwind of emotions. She had always been stampeded on by Rosaria and Isaac in the past. No matter how hard she struggled, she couldn't escape from their humiliation and insults. She wondered how they would feel when she appeared with Aaron that night. They probably would never have expected her to know someone as powerful as him. The thought of bumping into the two of them tonight made her excited instead of fearful and anxious. She would be with her protector. So Isaac is staying at the same hotel as us? Yes, Aaron said reluctantly. He hadn't expected her to figure out the surprise so quickly. At that moment, the stylist arrived and knocked on their door. She was a fashionable woman in her thirties, and she brought with her a light pink gown embellished with floral embroidery. April had seen it in a magazine as part of a high-end luxury brand's winter collection. I can go into the room with you to help you put it on, the stylist added. Aaron pulled the stylist aside to stop her. You're going in too? Of course, the lady nodded. She'll need help putting it on. You're not allowed to. Aaron grabbed April and pulled her into the room. I can help her. You just wait outside. With a loud bang, he shut the door in the lady's face. April was astonished. Before she could speak, Aaron interjected. No one is allowed to see your body, not even other women. You have such a perfect figure. What if she takes a liking to you? April blushed. She's a woman. Jeez. She could be into women, Aaron stated and then sat on the bed. April thought about all the time she had showered with Winnie. Aaron would probably kill her if he found out. This guy was scarily possessive. Episode 146. She didn't look back, but she knew that those were his lips. Just change here. I'll turn around and I won't peek, said Aaron. April didn't believe him at all. She looked around, then took the dress into a changing room in a bedroom. As she put the dress on, she realized that the stylist was right. She needed someone to zip her. She hesitated for a short while and then slowly walked out and said to Aaron with a soft voice, I need you to zip me up. While speaking, she blushed. Aaron's bright eyes turned as dark as ink as he raised his head to look at her. She hadn't done the makeup yet, but the light pink dress made her skin look iridescent. With her delicate collarbones, slender arms, and slim waist, she looked like a fairy. It was a v-neck dress. As the zipper was undone, her breasts were halfway exposed, looking as smooth as if she were carved from marble, making Aaron feel terribly thirsty. Don't look. Under Aaron's scorching gaze, even April's toes were feeling hot. She wanted to cover her breasts, but had to keep her hands on her shoulders to prevent the dress from falling off. She was surprised that Aaron would agree to dress in such a sexy style this time. After all, he even asked her to cover her collarbones at Marianne's birthday party. Zip me up now. Stop wasting time, she said. As she turned around, Aaron saw her snow-white back. While breathing slowly, he walked to her. April held her breath. Only after he walked up behind her and touched the zipper did she sigh with relief. However, she waited for a while but didn't hear any zip. Instead, something hot and soft was pressed against her back. She froze. She didn't look back, but she knew that those were his lips. Aaron! She turned back, feeling both shy and annoyed. Before she could see his face, he covered her lips with his. Her lips were soft and supple. Recalling what he just saw now, Aaron couldn't stop kissing her. April was still clear-minded. She was willing to kiss him, but she was also aware of the fact that kissing right now was no different from lighting a fire next to a pile of dry wood. She couldn't push him off because she had to hold the dress tight. The zip was still undone, and the dress could fall off at any time. She moaned in protest and tried to flinch, but he held her tighter and tighter. 
She was like a little rabbit that was trying to escape, but soon she was entrapped by him. Their tongues tangled together. Before long, April's brain stopped functioning. She didn't notice when he took her hands away from her dress and put them around his neck. One strap of the dress fell off, then the other one. Right after that, the pink dress fell to the ground, and then her nude bra fell off as well. Being kissed by Aaron, April felt like she was in a sauna. She was in love with someone else before, but had never experienced something so stimulating. Aaron was like a fire that she was enveloped by. He didn't only kiss her lips and ears and neck, but went lower to the places that hadn't been visited by anyone else. April leaned against the window, slightly raised her chin, and opened her mouth to breathe. Her eyes were misty and her face was as radiant as a sunset glow. She felt like countless feathers were caressing her body. It felt nice, but wasn't enough to satisfy her. Aaron took one single glance at her face and then gulped nervously. Her skin was so tender and soft. Her body was never this hot. He felt the warmth spreading from his toes all the way up to his head. He felt something hot trickle down his nose. April looked at him through her half-shut eyes and then gasped, You! Why is your nose bleeding? She turned around to look for a piece of tissue before stepping away and realized that her gown was in a pile at her feet. She blushed a deep red and quickly bent over to pick up her gown. Flustered, she clumsily looked for the right holes to put her arms in. She was extremely embarrassed. Aaron wiped his nose regretfully and walked over to help her with her gown. Don't touch me, you pervert. April slapped his hands away. Apricot, I couldn't help myself. You're just so gorgeous, and all I am is a man. Aaron hugged her tightly and pressed his lips against her ear. She could feel his hot breath on the tips of her ears. You get me so excited, it's hard to contain myself. April's heart was thumping in her chest, and she was at a loss for words. She was indignant because of his move, but also heard the sincerity in his voice, which was mingled with something else. Love? She knew that she shouldn't be hugging him like that. Something was bound to happen between the two of them. Let go of me first. I still need to try on the gown. She grumpily pushed him away. She knew she'd melt again if he made an advance. Aaron let go of her reluctantly, although he wanted to hold her naked like this for a while longer. He remembered his mission to humiliate their common enemy and focused on tidying up her gown. When April saw the hickeys on her breasts, she wanted to bury herself in a hole. You... How can I wear this gown tonight? April was at her wit's end. Anyone who saw the bruises would know what they were. She didn't even dare to walk out of the room and see the stylist. I think we should change the gown. No, Aaron refused. I think you look the best in this one. We can cover these up with some concealer. I'll ask the stylist to come in. Don't, April grabbed him. Wouldn't she know that what we've been doing in here once she sees me? I don't want that. What's wrong with that? You are my girlfriend, and isn't it normal that we have these kinds of things? Aaron wanted to tell her that her raw red lips would give them away anyway. April pounded his chest with frustration. He really has the cheek to say that, she thought to herself. Shouldn't you be shy about these things? I'm no ordinary man, Aaron smirked stupidly. That wasn't a compliment, she thought, and pushed him away. She fished out a tube of concealer from her bag and started applying it on her chest. Aaron watched her from the side. Those were marks left by him, and he was extremely proud of himself. This might be his proudest moment yet. He couldn't help but reach out and hug her from behind. Chuckling, he said, Apricot, you have such fragile skin. Didn't take much to make those marks. You're the cutest. April had just managed to calm herself down, and now she was blushing inside out again. She turned around and glared at him before walking angrily to the door. She suspected that he would leave many more bruises if she didn't leave right away. Miss Eisenberg, you look gorgeous in this gown. The stylist greeted her cheekily with a smile the moment she stepped out, her eyes resting on April's red lips in her chest. She paused before diverting her eyes quickly. Episode 147, In the Hanging Gardens. Miss Eisenberg, please sit here. Let me do your hair. The embarrassed April followed the stylist, thinking that the stylist was really professional. Thankfully, the kiss marks on her skin weren't too obvious. An hour later, April nearly failed to recognize herself in the mirror. The fashionable, wavy hair covered one shoulder of hers. She was wearing a pair of pink diamond earrings with tassels and a diamond necklace. The delicate eye makeup made her eyes look bright and charming, sparkling like stars. She was so beautiful and special that she could even stop people from thinking. Mr. Bennett? She's ready, the stylist reminded Aaron, who was sitting on the couch and looking at his phone. 
Aaron raised his head and saw her. His pupils dilated as he was shocked by her beauty. April had seen that look in his eyes earlier in the bedroom, so seeing it again, her knees felt weak. Thankfully, the stylist was standing right beside her. Not bad. Aaron stood up, nodded, and said, I'll tell Mr. Robbins to double your salary. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. The stylist happily packed her tools and said, I'll be leaving then. When the stylist left, Richard walked in. Seeing April, he paused for a few seconds and then said, My God, are you, are you April? I nearly failed to recognize you. You're like a fairy. Simply gorgeous. April blushed and responded with, Thank you, Rich. You're too kind. Aaron wasn't so happy about it. He felt that he should be the one complimenting her like that, but Richard had said those words. How should he compliment her then? He never tried to compliment any woman before, so his vocabulary was very limited. Enough! You're being dramatic, he said to Richard. Not at all. She's really beautiful. Richard nodded and said, Benny, why is your girlfriend so pretty? You've raised the bar for my future girlfriend. My future girlfriend can't be worse than yours, can she? Then you can stay single your whole life. Aaron's words made Richard cringe. Richard gave up on continuing this conversation, so he changed the topic and said, All right, but seriously, Mr. Walters from Cranton is here. He wants to meet us alone in the bar at the top floor to talk about the fundraising program in the UK. Hearing that, Aaron turned to April. Just go. I'll watch TV here, she said. You'll get bored staying here alone. Come upstairs with us. There's an Italian-style hanging garden. The view is nice. You can take some pictures. The sun is setting, so it's the perfect time to take pictures, Richard suggested. After finishing with Mr. Walters, we'll have dinner together and then attend the charity party. April thought for a moment and then nodded in agreement. At the top floor, April finally realized how beautiful the so-called Italian-style hanging garden was. There were green walls and corridors in the broad space, and in the middle was a small fountain. Soft English songs echoed through the garden. A few guests were sitting in the garden lazily chatting and drinking coffee. People were talking with low voices. Some of them were foreigners and some were American. Every single one of them seemed to be polite and well-educated. Before leaving, Aaron arranged a seat for April and then ordered her a glass of juice. April spent a while waiting for the sunset and then took a few beautiful pictures of the setting sun with her phone. Abruptly, two women walked into the area. One of them was wearing a light blue, high-slit dress holding a small silver purse. Her long and straight legs were half exposed. The woman had a delicate face with arched eyebrows, a small and pretty nose and cherry-like lips looking natural and sweet. The lady walking in front of her seemed like she was the assistant. She was wearing a denim jacket and carrying a large tote bag as she lifted the beaded curtain for the lady behind her. April kept her eyes on the pair as they took their seats next to the fountain. After they ordered fruit juices, the lady in the denim jacket looked over to April and caught her gaze. She frowned before whispering something to the pretty lady. The lady glanced at April and paused for a couple of seconds before looking away. She looked down at a thick book in her lap. April took a sip of her juice before heading toward the lady in her high heels. Hello, Miss Jennifer. The woman in the denim jacket reminded her harshly, Excuse me, miss. I know you want an autograph, but please observe the regulations in this restaurant. It was extremely rude of you to stare at us earlier on. Sorry, I, I haven't seen Miss Jennifer in a long time. I just wanted to say hello. April smiled and said apologetically, Do you still remember me, Miss Jennifer? Jennifer finally looked up from her script and stared hard at the beautiful girl in front of her. She found April extremely familiar. You are... April Eisenberg. April? Jennifer was shocked and looked at her with surprise and delight. You look so different. You always went for the natural beauty look. Innocent, like a schoolgirl. You look a lot more mature now, so stunning. April smiled gently since she only looked different today because she was dolled up for this special event. She heaved a sigh of relief to see Jennifer greet her warmly as she had in the past. Miss Jennifer, you look more beautiful than ever. Come on, you flatter me so. Jennifer put down the script and laughed. Let's sit together. You're still so hardworking. April looked at the script she had put on the table. She didn't expect Jennifer to work as hard as she had before, now that she was so popular. I have to do justice to my profession. Jennifer looked at her with a tinge of apology. I'm sorry about what happened to you. I couldn't render my help then, and I had lost all contact with you. Have you been well the past two years? Are you still doing any voice acting? I changed my name to April Kennedy. April was at ease when she felt her warmth. 
I'm still studying at Langford Art School, and I've dubbed two web series last year already. I also took part in a foreign project. Jennifer frowned. It's such a waste of your talent on a small project like that. Give me your contact details. I'm working on a new show, and we'll be going into post-production soon. I'll hire you to be my personal voice actor. Miss Atkinson, her assistant interrupted quickly. Miss Lily already said that Haley Wayne will be doing all of your voices from now on. If you swap her out so hastily, Miss Lily will be angry. I don't think I've signed a contract to hire Haley to be my designated voice actor. Jennifer shrugged. Anyway, I don't think her voice is suited for me. Haven't you seen all the comments on her newly released drama series? People are saying that her voice seemed out of place in those shows. April's voice is much closer to mine, not to mention the fact that Haley is Rosaria's pal. I wanted to fire her long ago. But April was integral to my success back then, when she was my voice actor then in that TV series. Jennifer interrupted her. When I only played small roles back then, April was already a big shot in the voice acting industry. She was willing to do me a favor and dub my lines then, and I'll always remember her kindness. I'm more than willing to do the same for her now. Episode 148, Isaac is the Past. April was touched. She had done voice acting for quite a few actresses. Many of them had become famous, but among all, only Jennifer remembered that. Your assistant was saying, began April. Don't you worry, I'll make her agree. Jennifer gently patted the back of April's hand and said, But honestly, your old friend Rosaria? I've never met anyone as disgusting as her. April gave a bitter smile. The others all thought Jennifer and Rosaria were sworn enemies because Rosaria rose to fame suddenly and Jennifer was jealous of her. Unlike those people, April clearly remembered that years ago she had introduced Rosaria to Jennifer and hoped that the latter could ask her friend if they needed voice actors. But as a result, Jennifer sneered and continued, You treated her so well, yet she actually stole your fiancé. Last year I saw her at the award ceremony. You can't imagine how proud she was. She started off in the entertainment business later than I did, and she's younger than me, but she has never shown any respect to me because she has Isaac's support, and she often encourages her fans to verbally attack me. April frowned. She also felt that Rosaria was disgusting. Years ago, Rosaria would try anything and everything to kiss up to Jennifer, and Jennifer was rather polite to her despite that. I made the mistake of becoming friends with her, April smiled and said. But after people found out about Mr. Lennox, her reputation has gotten worse. She has lost a few advertisements and TV series. But still, the Davidson Group is still helping her. She's staying in this hotel right now, and Isaac is here too. Jennifer glanced at April with worry, saying, Don't let them see you. Isaac is such an asshole. He's been trying to destroy you. Even worse, he's planning to purchase our company. If I hadn't been trying to stop Mr. Lanner from meeting about the company with him, our company would have become his. About Regalia. April lowered her voice and responded, In fact, Arrington is interested in Regalia as well. Arrington? Jennifer was surprised. I thought that was an investment company. I heard that the owner of Arrington is the future successor of the YCC group. Jennifer's assistant said, joining the conversation, Currently, Arrington's projects cover multiple fields, from electronic technology to artificial intelligence, but the entertainment business isn't included. The owner is planning to set foot into the business, April smiled and said. So I guess he'll choose to merge with Regalia. The Davidson Group, however, is going to try to devour it before Arrington makes a move. How do you know that? Jennifer raised her eyebrows and asked. It seems like you've experienced a lot these years, too. April smiled. Before she said anything, Aaron called. Come out. We're waiting for you by the entrance. We're going to have dinner. I need to go. My boyfriend's calling me for dinner. Do you have time to join us? April invited Jennifer. I don't think so. My dinner time has already been booked. Jennifer added with surprise. You have a boyfriend? Congratulations. You really should have forgotten about Isaac, that scumbag, long ago. I'll see you at the charity party then. You've dressed up, so you're attending the party too, aren't you? Asked April. Jennifer nodded and replied, Yeah, you're attending the party too? I guess your boyfriend does have a good background. He's the owner of Arrington. April smilingly nodded, then left. Jennifer's assistant clicked her tongue and said, Didn't expect her boyfriend to be such a rich and powerful man. No wonder she showed up here on the top floor. But I bet that rich man is just playing with her. Her assistant frowned. Jennifer, 
Franklin Shorman has been trying to build connections between the company and the Davidson Group for the longest time. He's a favored artist under Miss Lily, and she won't be pleased about this. Jennifer laughed sarcastically. When Regalia is bought over by the Davidson Group, I'll be under the same company as Rosaria. Do you think the company would still invest resources into me then? If you still want to be my assistant, you'll have to help me keep this a secret. If I go down, we'll go down together. The assistant shut up after hearing what she said. At the garden entrance, Richard and Aaron were waiting for April. What took you so long? Were there any men trying to hit on you? Aaron asked cautiously. What are you saying? The people up there were all posh and of a different class. April held his arms and said, Besides, I'm not that popular, okay? My girlfriend is naturally the most popular. Aaron looked at her arm wrapped around his own and smiled. This was a good sign. She was holding his hands wherever she went. Let's go to the restaurant. I'm starving. Richard hurried then. There's a really good French restaurant here. The restaurant was on the 28th floor, and they took the elevator up. Mr. Robbins had already made reservations, and the three of them took their seats by the window. At the table, Richard and Aaron were busy talking about work-related matters, and April was left alone to enjoy her food by herself. The portion size was small, but the food was prepared with finesse. After dinner, the three of them left the room, and it was about time for the charity ball. At the bar, Richard paid the bill while Aaron and April stood behind him. Aaron was playing with her fingers out of boredom. She was wearing the diamond ring that he gifted her. It looked wonderful on her. April was used to him fiddling about and letting her eyes wander around the restaurant. On the other corridor, Isaac was chatting happily with Franklin Shorman, the popular actor. Rosaria and Clark followed behind them. April was shocked when she saw what Rosaria was wearing. Rosaria was wearing the exact same pink gown when she walked closer to her. She was sure that it was the exact same design. When Isaac and Rosaria finally noticed them, they took a while before recognizing April. April looked extremely different from her usual self. Her wavy hair was seductive and sexy, but her dress made her look elegant and classy. Anyone who saw her wouldn't be able to take their eyes off her. Isaac's smile froze when he saw Aaron holding her hand, and his expression looked grim suddenly. He had never seen her dress this way before, so sexy and mature. She had always looked youthful and innocent in front of him, but today she properly transformed from a young girl into a woman in front of him. Only she was standing beside Aaron. He tried his best to control his emotions the last time he saw her making out with Aaron. He wanted her to realize that Aaron didn't have any value to her and to leave him on her own accord. He bumped into them here yet again. What did this mean? Was she trying to make him jealous? Wearing the exact same dress as Rosaria and all, was she trying to show him that she was much more beautiful than Rosaria? He felt much better after rationalizing his thoughts that way. Episode 149, Find Yourself a Caustic Husband. He walked toward April. Rosaria, who stood behind him, looked extremely embarrassed because she had also noticed that April's dress was exactly the same as hers. What was even worse was that April looked much prettier in the dress than she did. Rosaria believed that April did it on purpose. When two women show up in the same dress, only the less beautiful one would feel embarrassed. Watching a group of people getting close to her, April told herself to calm down. However, her tightened body and shaking hands revealed how nervous she was. Aaron sensed that, too. He raised his head to see Isaac, then raised his brows with surprise, saying, Mr. Davidson, what a coincidence. Good to see you again. I don't think it's a coincidence. Isaac gave a faint yet sinister smile. Probably. Aaron nodded and responded with, Mr. Davidson, you didn't follow us here, did you? I don't understand, Isaac said. What Aaron said was also what he wanted to say. Interesting, Aaron chuckled and continued. I have such doubts for a good reason, Mr. Davidson. Last time you claimed that my girlfriend was your fiancé. Rosaria gave a start. Richard paid the bill and came back to Aaron's argumentative chatter. He laughed and said, Yeah? But the last time I saw Mr. Davidson, he said that your girlfriend is his girlfriend's assistant and that your girlfriend tried to seduce him. It's so strange. Which one is real? Isaac's handsome face turned slightly dark. Really? Aaron smiled and lowered his head to ask April with a gentle voice. Apricot, tell me, is what he said real? I'm confused too. April raised her head to stare straight at Isaac, saying, Mr. Davidson, I thank you for saving me at the Flanders family, but... I don't think it's appropriate for you to tell people that I was your fiancé while I was unconscious. We were engaged, indeed, but after that, didn't you hold Rosaria's hands? Bring her to me and tell me that she is a hundred times better than me? Didn't you say that she's much more adorable than me and that she's good in bed? 
Didn't you tell me that you never wanted to marry me? All that happened two years ago. Now I finally have a new boyfriend, but again you try to start a rumor. Isn't that awful? Aaron blinked and said, I didn't know that. I think you're good in bed. April blushed and rolled her eyes toward him. She believed that now wasn't the time to say something like that as so many people could hear it. Isaac's muscles twitched. He told himself that Aaron and April were trying to infuriate him. He said to himself that it was impossible for them to have had sex. Behind him, Rosaria's face had twisted with jealousy. Isaac had actually told Aaron that April was his fiance. What did Rosaria mean to him then? Beside her, Franklin seemed to show a slight scornfulness when looking at her. She forced a smile and walked up, took Isaac's arm and said, Mr. Bennett, earlier Isaac was in a bad mood. He must have been joking with you. Before Isaac said anything, Aaron looked at Rosaria and asked with interest, Who are you? Rosaria wore an embarrassed look. She was a star after all, so it made her feel awkward when Aaron asked who she was in front of so many people. Mr. Bennett, I am Rosaria, she responded. She's famous now. Last year, she won the Best Newcomer Award, added April. Aaron nodded, then frankly showed his distaste. It's pretty obvious that she slept with someone to get that award. How could someone who looks like that become a star? Are her fans blind? Mr. Bennett. Rosaria bit her lip and tears were welling up in her eyes. Richard added, Real, she's wearing the same gown as you. Before April could say anything, Aaron said enthusiastically, That's right, but I think she's wearing the fake. It looks ridiculous on her. Miss, you should wear something more suitable for yourself. It looks really awkward when you try to wear a new design when you don't have the looks to compliment it. Isaac, Rosaria said pitifully. She looked at Isaac and pleaded for him to say something. Isaac took the opportunity and said, Mr. Bennett, it's very ungentlemanly of you to speak to a lady this way. What did I say? I didn't tell her that she was ugly to her face. Aaron said coldly, I just tried to subtly convey my opinions and advice to her. Would you have preferred it if I called her a great beauty? I think that would have been more disrespectful to lie to her, I mean. She can only improve with honest feedback. April almost wanted to clap for Aaron. He had been very subtle with her already, she thought. His malicious comments could really poison someone to death. This was the first time she felt so delighted hearing his snide comments. Find yourself a caustic husband and you won't ever need to argue for yourself. Isaac smiled. Your subtlety really blows my mind. I'm impressed by your thick skin, too. Aaron said sympathetically to Rosaria, Choose the right dress in the future, something that uplifts your status and looks. Don't force your boyfriend to run over to my girlfriend and call her his fiance. That'll be upsetting. His words were like harsh claps to both of their faces. There were other patrons in the restaurant. Even though Isaac was good at keeping a poker face, it was hard for him to hide his dark expression now. As for Rosaria, her face was a pale sheet and she was on the verge of fainting. Let's go, Benny. The charity ball is starting in five minutes. Richard reminded him with a giggle. Goodbye, Mr. Davidson. Aaron wrapped his arm around April's waist and waved goodbye with his free hand. He turned and walked away with April. Isaac was seething in anger as he watched them walk away. Nobody dared to say anything around him. At last, Franklin cleared his throat. Mr. Davidson, I'll go get the bill. This meal is on me. It's okay. How can I make you pay for the meal? Isaac patted his shoulders and gestured to Clark to get the bill. Who is that cocky man, Mr. Davidson? Franklin asked. The CEO of Arrington Corporation, Aaron Bennett. Isaac said slowly, I heard some news about Arrington's intentions on buying over Regalia. They've been asking around the industry. He has seen you with me now. If he buys over Regalia for real, I'm afraid he won't be getting the kind of emphasis placed on you now. Franklin looked serious. Don't worry, Mr. Davidson. I'll do my best to convince the shareholders of the director board to sell their shares to you. I'm going up to change, Isaac, Rosaria said palely. Do we have time for that? It's three minutes to the opening. Isaac looked at her coldly. He knew that she wasn't as beautiful as April was. He couldn't see a stark difference in the past, but now that the two of them were wearing the same gown, the difference was like heaven and earth. Episode 150. To be controlled by a woman. But, Rosaria stomped her foot. Forget it. There are going to be many important guests at the event tonight. It wouldn't reflect well on you if you arrived late. We just recently had a backlash of criticism, so we should be more conscious of our public image right now. Isaac marched towards the elevator. Franklin struggled and said, If that's going to be the case, then take it easy. At least there aren't any reporters at the event tonight. You should reorganize your own team, though, Miss Rosaria. 
Someone must have leaked the information regarding the dress you're wearing tonight. Thank goodness that lady wasn't from the entertainment industry. Rosaria clenched her fists in anger. It was definitely no coincidence that April was wearing the same dress as she was. In the elevator, April caught sight of Aaron's smug grin on the reflective surface. He wasn't trying to hide his glee at all. She couldn't help smiling along with him and clutched his arm tighter. No wonder you're letting me wear this revealing dress, even though you're such a petty and bossy man. Of course, Aaron grunted and said. When I made Marvin dig around for Rosaria's choice of outfit tonight, I didn't expect her to pick something so provocative, which honestly looks so pointless on her. I don't understand why she would pick a dress like this. Since you can definitely outshine her in this outfit, I decided to loosen up this time. I'll never let you wear something like this ever again. April burst into laughter. She was laughing when she suddenly paused. She squeezed his arm and said seriously, You're a real specimen, huh? You were looking at her chest the whole time. I didn't even notice until you mentioned it. Richard burst into laughter beside him. Real, don't you understand? When men check women out, all they look at is their face, their chest, and their butt. Aaron's just an ordinary man. Aaron gave him a side glance to silence him. You are the only despicable one here. Don't include me in your generalization. The only reason why I noticed her chest was because of her choice of gown. Richard rolled his eyes at him. It wasn't that small. Aaron was being overly harsh and critical about his girlfriend's nemesis. Aaron said to April, My own brother has become jealous of me ever since starting a relationship with you. I'm just so lucky that my woman is so darn gorgeous. April blushed. He had been as sweet as honey ever since they started dating. She was receptive to his affections in private, but she was still embarrassed whenever he was like that in front of others. Richard was well shocked. His brother was becoming such a corny man. You're dead meat if I catch you staring at another woman's chest again. April glared at him and decided to pardon him on account of his plot against Rosaria. Of course not. I'll only look at yours, Aaron thought. He was over the moon. What a great feeling it was to be controlled by a woman. It proved that she could get jealous over him. What a petty woman, but he loved every bit of it. It showed that he was so charismatic that she couldn't tolerate any bit of imperfection. What are you smiling about? Richard sneered when he looked over at Aaron. You wouldn't understand. You don't have a girlfriend. Damn, I am single indeed. Why does he keep doing that to me? Richard silently complained to himself. He decided he had to find a girlfriend as soon as possible. How did you know Rosaria was going to wear this dress? Is someone in her team working for you? April asked curiously. Later. You'll find out how I know much more than you could imagine, Aaron said, giving her a meaningful glance. Will there be more shows to watch? April was surprised. I brought you all the way here, not just to embarrass them in the restaurant, said Aaron mysteriously. April honestly couldn't guess what might happen later, so she became more and more curious about it. Before, she wasn't really interested in the charity party, but now she was excited. The party was taking place in the hotel. Once the three of them walked into the venue, the organizer and some people from the financial circle recognized Aaron and Richard and came to greet them affably. Four or five minutes later, as they were chatting with these people, Isaac, Rosaria, and their people walked in as well. The few people standing near the entrance noticed them instantly. Rosaria, who was wearing the same dress as April, caught the most attention. Mr. Franco, who was relatively frank, glanced at Rosaria and said, Isn't that Rosaria? She's rather famous suddenly. She's wearing the same dress as Ms. Eisenberg. Before, I saw her on the TV and felt that she was quite pretty, but somehow after seeing Ms. Eisenberg in this dress... I feel that Rosaria is just average. No wonder my wife told me current actresses are mostly dependent on lighting effects and that they only look good on screens. His voice wasn't loud, but it wasn't low either, and they were heard by Rosaria who was passing by. She was infuriated. However, as the people who attended this charity party were all influential, Rosaria had no other choice but to pretend she had heard nothing and walked toward her seat. Your wife is right. Aaron didn't like Mr. Franco at first, but after hearing his words, he immediately gave him a smiling glance. Good. This Mr. Fang seems nice. Maybe we can cooperate next time. At 7.45, Richard guided April and Aaron to the first row. As they walked to the right side of the venue, April paused when seeing Isaac, Rosaria, and a few others who had already sat down. What Aaron mentioned before doesn't mean that we are going to be sitting together with them, right? The moment after she had thought that, she heard Richard's laughter. Mr. Davidson, what a coincidence. We meet again. We've seen each other three times in 20 minutes. Fate does bring us all together. Are your seats here? Great. Our seats are number seven, eight, and nine, right next to yours. Yeah, 
It's my pleasure to sit next to Mr. Bennett and Mr. Jones. Isaac wasn't even sure if he should feel delighted or unhappy about it. He felt delighted because April was so close to him, but he felt unhappy because this was definitely not a coincidence. It seemed that Aaron had prepared this. Sit down. Aaron took the small purse out of April's hands, then slightly lifted her dress for her to sit down easier. She sat next to Aaron, and Aaron sat next to Isaac. Richard sat by April's other side. Dear wife, later, if you like anything, let me know. I'll buy it for you, no matter how expensive it is, said Aaron gently. His voice wasn't loud, but everyone around him was able to hear it. April shivered slightly, feeling that she had goosebumps. It was the first time she had heard him talk so gently and call her wife. He's really involved in his acting. Wife? Isaac clenched his hands, trying to control himself. I don't think you two have married, he said. Episode 151. Will they fight in the bathroom? Yeah, we're not married yet, but it's only a matter of time. Young people nowadays enjoy calling each other hubby and wifey anyway. I wasn't used to it at first, but my wife insisted. Aaron patted April's hands lovingly and looked at her with affection. Richard was about to throw up. Isaac knew that he was trying to anger him with his words, but his heart still ached thinking about April calling another man her husband. He was in great pain. After holding himself back for a couple of minutes, he said dully, Watch your words, Mr. Bennett. It'll be really awkward for the lady if you don't end up marrying her. True, like how you were engaged to my wife before, Mr. Davidson. It was pretty awkward how your engagement fell apart. Aaron nodded thoughtfully. Isaac uncrossed and crossed his legs again. He was on the verge of punching him. He inhaled a sharp breath to calm himself down. It would be best not to engage Aaron further. Aaron, on the other hand, wasn't about to let him off so easily. It was a golden opportunity to get his revenge. He hadn't forgotten all the heart-piercing things Isaac had said to him at the hospital. Although he couldn't ruin his career right away, he could torture his mind. It was an amusing task for him. He could tell that Isaac still had feelings for April. That would be the only reason why Isaac looked at them with such jealousy and envy, why he would jump into the pool to save April without any hesitation, and why he was so anxious and worried at the hospital. Oh, right, wifey, we talked about going on a vacation during the winter break, right? Have you thought about where you want to go? Aaron rested his arm on April's shoulders. Let's go to the beach and stay at one of those floating villas. We can go stargazing at night. All right, hubby. April decided to play along with the act and smiled. Isaac felt a sharp pain in his chest. She had never addressed him that way before. She was calling another man her hubby. He was heartbroken and could no longer take it. He stood up abruptly and said, I'm going to the restroom. Rosaria glared viciously at April. What are you looking at? Aaron hissed. Are you jealous of my wife's beauty? I know you're jealous. Do you want me to recommend a plastic surgery clinic to you? My company is invested in one now. I can give you a discount on the account of Isaac, of course. Rosaria was speechless. She cursed him in her mind. She had never met a man who was so brazenly mean before. Wifey, you sit here with Richard. I need the restroom, too. Aaron released her hand and stood up. April blinked in disbelief. Was he going to pester Isaac at the toilet as well? That would be a little excessive, wouldn't it? She should be the one obsessed with getting revenge. He was so full of aggressiveness, there was no need for her to defend herself at all. In the men's room, Isaac splashed his face with cold water. He slowly pulled out a silver engagement band from his pocket. It was the ring that he had picked out with April at the mall the day they got engaged. They were so in love then, but now... She was with another man, laughing by his side, calling him her husband. He thought the most painful part was not being able to tell her how much he loved her. He was wrong. The most painful part was watching her fall in love with someone else. He was in so much pain and unbearable misery. That's not the ring you gave April years ago, is it? Aaron's chuckles were heard from behind. Isaac suddenly turned back. Aaron stood behind him, looking at him with a pair of dark eyes, wearing a faint smile. Mr. Bennett, you're following me really closely. Isaac dropped his face immediately and said, What do you want? I just want to see you get mad. Aaron smiled scornfully and responded with, Last time when April was unconscious, you said quite a lot to try to tear us apart. I wasn't trying to tear you apart. I just said the truth. Isaac abruptly gave a smile and then said, Aaron, are you jealous? Jealous? Aaron snorted and said, Isaac, I assume you clearly know if what you said is true or not. The corners of Isaac's eyes twitched slightly. A drop of sweat fell from his hair onto the corner of his lips, which were pressed tightly together. Seeing the look on his face, Aaron lowered his voice further and continued, 
Do you know how well I know April? From head to toe, she knows exactly what size I am. Isaac gave a cold smile and responded with, So what? She knows mine too. After all, we were together for a long time. Aaron replied carelessly, What I said includes my man size. Isaac stayed silent. Aaron delightfully added, And my duration. Isaac stared at him in the eyes. Both of them seemed to release fire from their eyes. Isaac clenched his fist so tight that a bone-cracking noise was heard. He really wanted to kick Aaron's ass in the bathroom. However, he was clearly aware of the fact that he was no match for Aaron because Graham told him that Aaron used to be a special force soldier. Besides, it wasn't the time for him to turn against Aaron openly yet. However, he really couldn't stand it anymore. He wanted to carelessly tear Aaron into pieces when he thought of how April might have slept with Aaron. Aaron, the party is going to begin. I'll take my leave. At last, he took a step backward, turned, and left the bathroom. Aaron leaned against the washbin, looking at Isaac's back with a smile. He thought that Isaac would attack him. If that happened, he might be able to beat Isaac up in the bathroom. Isaac was once engaged to this woman. God knew how hard he had been trying to control his anger about it. However, he was surprised to find that Isaac was pretty good at putting up with him. In the venue, April had been glancing at the bathroom from time to time. Will they fight in the bathroom? Richard spoke out April's thoughts. April turned to look at him and then found the sweetly smiling Jennifer walking over while greeting the people around her. When making eye contact with April, Jennifer raised her eyebrows with surprise, but soon she gave a meaningful smile when seeing Rosaria and Franklin, who were just one seat away from April. While shaking hands with April, Jennifer looked at Richard and said, April, you're sitting here too. Is this your boyfriend? He's so handsome. He's even better looking than some of the popular actors in our company. She also quickly glanced at Franklin, who wore an embarrassed look when hearing her words. April didn't know how to react. She knew that Jennifer and Franklin were working for the same company. Her words are even as mean as Aaron's. Richard didn't know as much as April did, but he managed to recognize Jennifer. It was their first time meeting, yet Jennifer's compliments had already disabled him from not smiling. He used to be especially confident of himself, but recently he was depreciated cruelly by Aaron and his confidence had suffered heavy blows. Now he felt he was being healed entirely by the girl in front of him. Episode 152. Mr. Bennett is really a man of virtue. You too, Miss Jennifer. You're so much prettier in real life than on television or in photos. You're glowing unlike the other female celebrities who cake themselves with makeup. Some of them make me think that all their photos were photoshopped. They don't look good in real life at all. Richard stood up and shook her hand. He glanced at Rosaria casually. Rosaria wanted to vomit blood. Why did they have to drag Franklin and herself into this? The corner of April's lips curved into a smile. She was chuckling on the inside. The two of them had used the opportunity to throw shade at the other two at the same table. She realized that she was only a bit player in tonight's show, even though she was the one with the grievances and old scores to settle. The people around her were so fired up. Rosaria had probably offended too many people in the past. Miss Jennifer, you're mistaken. He's not my boyfriend. He's Richard Jones, my boyfriend's good buddy, April explained gently. Laugh to death? Jennifer was stunned, but she quickly realized that she was being rude and nodded. Oh, yeah? I'm sorry. Your name is quite special and interesting. Richard's smiling face froze, and he said, Richard means brave and uninhibited. Jennifer nodded. My name is Jennifer. I'll be sitting beside you tonight, Mr. Jones. Do you want to change seats with me since you're friends with April? Richard offered. Thank you, then. Jennifer accepted his kind gesture. The moment they took their seats, Isaac appeared, looking grim. His face was as pale as snow. April felt something stuck in her throat. What had Aaron done? Isaac was always enigmatic and hard to figure out. She was always infuriated whenever she bumped into him. It was rare to see him so livid. Isaac took his seat and stared at April with fury. She felt uncomfortable and irritated, so she said, Isaac, have you seen my husband? He went to the men's room as well. Isaac was hopping mad. He was just about to say something when April suddenly cast her gaze somewhere behind him. She was smiling ear to ear at Aaron, who was walking suavely with his hands in his pockets. He frowned when he caught sight of the stranger sitting beside April. Why did you change your seat, Richard? Who is this woman? This is Jennifer. I was telling you about her, April explained hastily. I didn't expect to bump into her here. Jennifer, this is my boyfriend, Aaron Bennett. Hello, Mr. Bennett, Jennifer said politely. She noticed how wary he was with strangers and decided to address him more formally. 
Hmm. Aaron nodded at her in acknowledgement. Look, his woman was introducing him as her boyfriend. What did you say to Isaac in the men's room? April whispered curiously. It's a secret between men. The charity event started promptly at 8 o'clock. It was an auction of donated items, and the proceeds would go to a foundation for children with leukemia. The first item was a landscape painting by a modern contemporary artist. It wasn't a historical collectible, so the bid started off at $10,000. At $30,000, Aaron suddenly raised his hand. $100,000! The host was shocked as the painting was overpriced, even at $30,000. $100,000 by Mr. Bennett! What a generous man! Under the gazes of the others who were whispering to each other, Aaron crossed his legs, proudly raised his chin, and said with a cold and clear voice, Since this is a charity event, why are we caring so much about the price of the piece? The most important thing is that we're going to help those children with leukemia. Perhaps if we pay more, one more life will be saved. His words brought himself praise from almost all the others in the venue. Even April looked at him in a different way, saying, Dunting, I didn't know that you liked to help others. Mr. Bennett really is a man of virtue. The MC who held the microphone couldn't stop complimenting Aaron. Isaac clenched his teeth and raised his bidding paddle. 1.5 million. 1.8 million, Aaron said, raising the price further. 2 million, said Isaac. This time, Aaron stayed silent. The MC looked at him and asked, Mr. Bennett, are you going to bid higher? No, Aaron shook his head. Isaac finally sighed with relief. Looking at Aaron, he said, Aaron, didn't you say that if we pay more, one more life will be saved? Aaron nodded, glanced at him, and responded with, Yes, but the one who paid two million for a modern landscape painting might be seen as an idiot. Isaac's pupils shrank and his heart nearly exploded because of anger. The corners of April's mouth twitched intensely. She was honestly impressed by Aaron. Turned out that he had said all the nice words earlier just to entrap Isaac. April admitted that she overestimated Aaron's virtue. However, seeing Isaac trying so hard to keep himself from losing his temper, she felt rather delighted. So the first piece was sold to Isaac like that. For the second and third piece, Aaron didn't make a move. The fourth piece was a blue and white porcelain vase. The starting price was $2,800,000. When someone offered $4 million, Aaron raised his bidding paddle and said, $6 million. The venue stirred again. Isaac curved his lips into a smile, raised his bidding paddle and followed... Eight million. Ten million, said Aaron. Hearing that price, all the others turned to Isaac. At that point, anyone with discerning eyes had figured out that Isaac was competing against Aaron on purpose. This time, Isaac didn't bid higher, but smilingly said to Aaron, Aaron, since you like this piece so much, I'll just give it up. You laughed at me earlier, but now you're going to pay ten million for an average blue and white porcelain vase. What a fool. Aaron gave a smile and then said with a loud voice, Thank you, Isaac. I was waiting for you to bid higher so I could pay this piece at a better price to help some more underprivileged children. What a shame. How about this? I'll add five million. I'll pay fifteen million for this vase so we can build a few more primary schools for the needy children who are living in the mountain areas. Mr. Bennett, on behalf of those children, I thank you for what you have done. The MC excitedly started clapping. Soon the venue was overwhelmed by applause and praises. Aaron smilingly stood up, waved his hand, then gently made a bow. April was a little speechless. It's such a waste that this man isn't competing for an Oscar. Isaac's face had blushed crimson at the moment. He even wanted to chop up Aaron and chew him up. Before, he barely made any contact with Aaron and was only impressed by his proudness. But now he found Aaron was so shameless that he could even turn black to white. Rosaria held Isaac's hand and said, Isaac, calm down. Stop bidding. Isaac coldly threw away her hands and gave her a threatening glance. Episode 153. If she's half drunk, someone else will get a chance. Isaac pushed her hands away and glared at her coldly. Rosaria pursed her lips spitefully and turned to glare at April. She hated her guts. April felt aggrieved. She had no idea what stunt Aaron was going to pull. It wasn't her plan. Jennifer tugged her arm and gave her a thumbs up. She whispered, Thank goodness your boyfriend isn't in the entertainment industry. He would win Best Actor, no doubt. April chuckled. Aaron held her hand gently, raised it to his face, and planted a firm kiss. It was yet another blow to Isaac. At 9.40 p.m., the charity auction had ended. There had been 30 items available, and Aaron had been the star of the entire auction. When the event ended, he was surrounded by many celebrities and business tycoons who were all singing his praises. 
Isaac was about to slip away quietly when Aaron called out to him. Isaac, you are a big stakeholder in the entertainment industry. The movie estate has earned you tens of millions of dollars easily. You only donated four million tonight. I hope you can participate more actively in the future. You shouldn't be keeping all your money in your own pocket. There are so many children out there in need of our financial support. It won't mean much to you, but it could potentially change the lives of less privileged family in a rural village, Aaron said thoughtfully. If April hadn't known better about the tricks up his sleeve, she would have been moved by his sensational speech. One of the more senior businessmen said in approval, Not only is Master Bennett young and successful, but you also have a heart of gold. CEO Caitlin really taught her grandson well. If I had a grandson like you, I would have sweet dreams every night. Uncle Newman, I'm just trying my best to do the right thing, Aaron said humbly. Isaac watched the conversation and wished he could throw his shoe at Aaron's face. He should really go into acting. Isaac had never met anyone as fake as Aaron, even after all those years in the business. Isaac would have been much more generous if he had been in a better mood. Now he looked as if he were a shrewd and calculating businessman after Aaron's noble and altruistic lecture. He had made himself look like a saint. There was nothing Isaac could do about it. Aaron, you've taught me quite a lesson. I'll remember what you've said tonight, Isaac said through gritted teeth and promptly took his leave. Look at him. He's so indignant, Aaron said to Newman. My grandfather always told me not to forget the poor when you enjoy the riches of the world, Newman said with approval. Don't hold it against him. He's just a despicable man who earned his place with the help of a woman, a petty figure. April was shocked. How did people know about that? Uh, why do you say so, Newman? Aaron raised his brows. I only found out recently. You've heard about what happened to Edward Lewis, right? Although he got what he deserved, his daughter was sadly implicated as well. I heard that Isaac was engaged to his daughter and stole the Lewis Corporation from the moment her father went to jail. Apparently she was robbed of everything. What an immoral man. She was the reason he could enter the Lewis Group in the first place. The worst part is that he banned her from entering the entertainment industry after that. She couldn't even find a job. Who knows where she is now? Paused briefly, Newman wore a serious look and said, Don't think Uncle Newman is lying to you. That's real. Many from the entertainment circle know it. That man is too brutal. In my opinion, he definitely got close to Ms. Lewis on purpose. He was aiming for her family business since the beginning. I hate that kind of people the most. They've even given up on their conscience for money. Oh, yeah? Aaron showed distaste on his face and then said, That's hateful indeed. I should stay away from those kinds of people. If any of your friends ever cooperate with Isaac, don't forget to warn them so they won't get entrapped by him. Tell me about it. Earlier, you said that he should donate more to help the needy children, but how could he possibly be willing to do that? He cares about nothing but money. Newman sighed and continued, I'm flying back to my hometown tonight. We should have some tea together when you have time. I'll be leaving now. See you, Uncle Newman. Aaron politely waved his hand. After seeing Uncle Newman off, Aaron turned back to find the strange look in April's eyes. April, is this the Mr. Bennett you mentioned earlier? Is he the one who wants to buy Regalia? Jennifer walked over with a sweet smile. Aaron raised his brows slightly and said frankly, Can you help me? Mr. Bennett, you're really straightforward. Jennifer raised her chin and responded frankly as well. This place isn't good enough. I think we need to talk privately. I'm busy tonight. Tomorrow morning, you can talk to Richard from our company. Aaron pointed at Richard with his chin. Richard was confused. He asked, Will you be busy tomorrow morning too? April and Jennifer are friends, so I think maybe we can have breakfast together. I don't want to have breakfast with you. I want to have breakfast alone with April. Aaron responded distastefully. Jennifer smiled. Richard rolled his eyes and replied, Perfect. I'd like to have a meal with a pretty lady alone as well. April, are you free tonight? The bar at the top floor is nice. I think we can hang out there and talk about voice acting, Jennifer said to April. April turned to Aaron. She thought that he would disagree, but to her surprise, he thought shortly and nodded. He then said, Richard and I are going out for a meeting tonight and we'll come back late. It'll be good for you to hang out with Jennifer. Where are you going? Aaron's reaction made April suspicious. You're not going to some other place filled with women, are you? She asked. You're such a stingy, jealous little girl. We're not even married yet, and you're already trying to control me. Aaron gently pinched her cheek with a warm smile. He understood her. After all, he was so charming, and there were countless girls outside who wanted him. However, he believed that she should believe in him as he was different from the immoral Isaac. April's face was twisted by Aaron's hands, so she patted the back of his hand. Then Aaron turned to Richard and said, Explain it to her. I'm really helpless. 
Richard was speechless, feeling that Aaron was showing off. We're going to meet the owner of a financial management company, which has developed a popular app. We intended to cooperate with this company. It's a rather important case. If it wasn't, not even ten horses could drag him away from you tonight, said Richard. Don't drink too much alcohol, said April. At the entrance, the two men and the two women went their separate ways. After taking the elevator down, Richard abruptly asked, It's so strange. Usually you keep April as if she was a prisoner. But why'd you let her go to the bar with Jennifer tonight? I'll ask Manager Robbins to send a man to keep an eye on her. She'll be fine. Aaron paused slightly, then glanced at Richard with scorn and continued, This is why you can't get a girlfriend. She will goes to the bar and gets half drunk, then someone else will get a chance. Episode 154 I'm your elder sister, so how can you hold me to sleep? Richard's mouth was gaping. After a while, he said, Fuck. It was 11.30 p.m. April was at the bar with Jennifer. The two of them reminisced about the times they'd worked together and they slowly finished an entire bottle of wine. When they walked back to their rooms, April felt a little lightheaded. She was a lightweight in the first place and she was feeling tipsy from the wine. Back in the room, she prepared to shower, seeing that Aaron wasn't back yet. When she saw flower petals placed beside the bathtub, she couldn't resist taking a hot bath. As she admired the night scene from the bathtub, she slowly sobered up, but she felt an overwhelming sense of sleepiness. Thinking about what happened during the day, she thought about how the bathroom was designed with an open concept, and she didn't want Aaron to catch her in such a compromising situation. She decided to quickly dry and dress before he came back. As she put on the bathrobe and dried her hair, she heard a series of footsteps entering the living room. Careful. Easy. Careful. Richard's voice could be heard. She twisted her hair into a bun and walked out of the bathroom. Richard was propping Aaron on the couch, and Aaron looked like he had had one too many drinks. His jacket was strewn to the side, and his shirt was unbuttoned at the top, revealing his sexy chest. What happened, Brother Richard? April asked anxiously. Richard turned to look at her, and a wave of heat spread through his body. April was wearing a pink robe, and her skin looked radiant and soft. Parts of her hair were framing her petite face, and he could smell the bath lotion on her skin. Any normal man would be mesmerized by her. He chanted a Buddhist scripture in his mind and prayed for April in his head. Aaron had purposely drunk a little too much, and now he was acting like he was completely drunk. He obviously had other intentions in mind. April, you won't be able to escape tonight. We were at a business meeting at the club, and one of the bosses kept toasting us. We didn't bring our assistants along, so we had to drink up ourselves. Little Benny isn't such a great drinker, so we got drunk quite quickly. Richard sighed in pretense. You take care of him. I'm quite dizzy, too, so I'm going to go ahead to bed. Richard stumbled out. When she heard the door click shut, April walked towards Aaron, and she shook him gently. Aaron, wake up. Hmm? Aaron peeped through his mostly shut eyes. His vision was a little blurry, so he shook his head vigorously. When he caught sight of April, he was overwhelmed with a wave of heat. The woman in front of him was bending over, and he could see her cleavage through the low neckline. She was wearing a bra, and it was a magnificent sight. Aaron stuttered. April. April, you're so beautiful. It was rare for her to see him in such a stupor, and she burst out laughing. Let me carry you in my arms to the bedroom. He didn't want her to carry him in her arms. I, I don't want that. Just give me a hand. No, I need to carry you in my arms. I've carried you before, and you said so yourself that I was as strong as a bull. April smiled slyly and started lifting him up. She hadn't worked as a carer for too long, so her strength wasn't as good as before. When he was turned by her, Aaron suffered an awful dizziness that made him want to die. The most humiliating moment of his life was when April carried him in her arms. Today, he was 70% drunk. He was able to drink a lot in the past, though, so today, even though he was feeling a little dizzy, his mind stayed clear. When he came in, he pretended to be completely drunk, so if he suddenly became clear-minded again, April would know that he had been pretending. Therefore, no matter how ashamed he felt, he had to keep pretending. April carried him to the door with great effort. She looked like she was about to exhaust herself. She regretted deciding to carry him. She had overestimated herself. Have you gained weight? You're as heavy as a pig, April murmured. She thought that he might not be able to memorize the things that happened tonight as he was drunk. I didn't gain weight. Aaron's dry voice sounded a little childish. How could I gain weight? My body is just perfect, with no extra fat and efficient muscles. How can you stay so narcissistic even when you're drunk? Are you really drunk or are you pretending? Asked April. Aaron's heart missed a beat. 
He let out a breath reeking of booze at her face, saying, Of course, I'm not drunk. I'm perfectly sober. I can take ten more bottles. Just keep bragging. April clenched her teeth and put him on the large bed. Since she tried too hard, her body leaned forward and ended up dragging into his arms. Besides the smell of alcohol, the scent of male hormones had also been radiating from his body. April blushed, and she hurriedly tried to get up. However, Aaron wrapped his limbs around her like an octopus. He coiled his long legs around her waist while whispering with the deep and hoarse voice, Don't go, April. I don't want you to go. This posture nearly gave April a mental breakdown. Aaron was underneath her. She was lying upon him, hands by his face, and his legs were wrapping around her waist. She hadn't slept with any man yet, but she knew how it might happen. Wasn't this a position? However, their positions were reversed. She was on top of him. Now she believed that he was really drunk. Otherwise, how would this proud man let her be on top? Let go of me. I'll be right next door. April tried to persuade him with a gentle voice, as if he was a child. No, I want to hold you to sleep. Aaron put his arms around her neck. His eyes sparkled like the stars. April's heart raced and her face blushed crimson. She finally understood why so many men would feel it hard to resist when a woman put her arms around their necks from underneath them. Turned out that a man could be tempting too when his arms were around your neck. And the man underneath April was way too handsome and charming. Normally this man was standing high above the masses, but now he was just proud and adorable. Stop. I'm your elder sister, so how can you hold me to sleep? April had a wicked idea. She lied to him. You used to call me Sister April. Aaron felt a little speechless. This woman is really evil. She thinks I'm wasted. When did I call her Sister April? Richard called her that. April, you're lying. I'm drunk, but I can clearly remember that you're my woman. Aaron turned around and pinned her down. April gave a start. She tried to sit up, but his legs, which were upon her, were as heavy as stones. I'm dead. I went for wool and came home shorn. Episode 155. Sleeping like this was even better. Note. Dear listeners, the following episode contains explicit content. Kindly skip to the next episode in case you feel uncomfortable with such subjects. After being flipped to the bottom, April's waistband was loosened and the bathrobe hugged her limply. She quickly tried to excuse herself before anything else was revealed. Don't lie on top of me. Let me go get you a warm towel to clean your face. No. April, I feel so nauseous and dizzy. Aaron collapsed on top of her, and then he buried his face into the nape of her neck and breathed beside her ear. It was her sensitive spot. She immediately felt a wave of heat overwhelm her, building from her lower abdomen. Don't. Don't, April whispered. Her voice was sweet like honey and irresistible. April, don't leave me. Sleep with me tonight. Aaron started to undress. Before April could react, his shirt was thrown aside and her bathrobe was as good as gone. She was about to resist him when he started planting kisses all over her body. Although she had already sobered up, she was slightly buzzed, and with everything moving slower tonight, she began to drift in and out of consciousness as he continued to trail down her body with his warm lips. Don't worry, April. I won't penetrate you tonight. If I do, I'm a bastard. I'm a man of my word. He groaned into her lips and beside her ears as his hot hands traveled up along the curves of her waist. April was overwhelmed and she felt the warmth spreading all over her body, his temperature adding to hers. Suddenly he grabbed her hand and pulled it towards his member. April was shocked. Although she had touched it before in the past when she took care of him, she had never gripped it so tightly and intimately. He wasn't lying about how impressive his size was. She was taken aback by his member, but he didn't notice her surprise. He didn't penetrate her that night, but they did everything in between. She was absolutely embarrassed. At 1 a.m., Aaron laid next to her and drifted off to sleep. He had never felt this sort of exhilaration before in his life. He was a man touched by his woman now. April was wide awake, although she was physically drained, especially her hands. She didn't want to think about what had just happened. It was a completely new experience for her. She never thought she would be the type to do something like that, but this guy was so insistent she had succumbed to him in the heat of the moment. The more she thought about it, the more embarrassed she felt, and she bit down on the arm that was circled around her. Hey, April, I'm beat. I'll give it to you tomorrow, Aaron mumbled as he stroked her cheeks. This guy was so thick, she wasn't trying to suggest anything more scandalous. Let me go. I'm going to wash my hands. April pleaded desperately. Wash them tomorrow. We can wash up together. He kissed her shoulders and hugged her tighter. 
What a joke. If she had the chance to get out of bed, she would run back to her room immediately. He wanted to hug her to sleep all night. It would be wonderful. Two naked bodies against each other. April had no more left within her to protest. His arm was as heavy as lead, and she resigned herself to sleeping beside him. Every time she closed her eyes, what happened last night would replay in her mind like slides. The scenes re-emerged in her head one after another, and every one of those images made her eyes turn red and her heart race. At last, she slowly fell asleep because it was late and she was exhausted. In the morning, the sheer curtain fluttered gently. Aaron woke up first. He opened his eyes to find April in his arms. The blanket covered their bodies, only exposing their shoulders. His skin had an olive color, while hers was as white as milk. She lied on her side. Half of her shiny black hair was spread on the large bed, the other half coiled on her arm. Under the blanket, their skin clung tightly. He felt a sweetness from his heart. So this is how a man will feel when sleeping together with a woman. Recalling that the last few times when they slept together was with their clothes on, he now felt that this was so not intimate. He remembered that when he was a soldier, he had two friends in the army who were a couple of years older than him. Every time they went on vacation, they would get anxious to go home so they could sleep together with their wives. Sleeping was a good thing, but sleeping like this was even better. Aaron lowered his head to gently kiss April's hair. At that moment, April's eyelashes moved slightly. Seeing that she was about to open her eyes, Aaron hurriedly lied back down, closed his eyes, and pretended to be asleep. April woke up, finding herself in a strange, large bed. Through the French window, she saw the blue sky. Her back was clinging to a warm chest. She slept tight because she was too tired last night. It took her a while to recall that she wasn't in the flat near her school, and instead she traveled with Aaron yesterday. And last night, they... Her face immediately turned red. She decided to sneak out before he woke up. Even if she failed to do so, she should at least put some clothes on. However, she tried for a while but failed. Even worse, something that was pressing against her back was rising again. She froze. April, are you trying to seduce me so early in the morning? A man's lazy voice was heard. April wanted to cry but failed to shed any tears. She spent some effort trying to pull his hands away and then she wrapped herself up with the blanket and sat up angrily looking back. She was going to complain but once she saw him she was dumbfounded. Just now she wrapped herself with a blanket, but didn't notice that she had taken away a big half of the blanket which covered Aaron's body. At that moment, only his lower legs were still covered in the blanket, while the rest of his body was entirely exposed. She had seen his body multiple times, but now she was in a different situation. April, if you want to see my body, just tell me. You know exactly how many scars I have anyway. Aaron didn't pull the blanket back, but turned his body and rested his chin on his palm, as he believed that he would look more charming this way. Who wants to see your body? April blushed scarlet while trying to cover his body with the blanket. As she tried to cover part of his body, he reached out an arm and pulled her toward him. Then he sat up, arms around her waist, looking as proud as a peacock. Before some people said that my body is perfect, are you satisfied with it? Don't make me so sick early this morning. April rolled her eyes. Are you pregnant? But I don't think I penetrated you last night, Aaron joked. Weren't you drunk last night? April turned back alertly. Episode 156. He had rarely met a girl who complimented his appearance. I was drunk, but how could I possibly forget what happened last night? Especially what happened last night. Aaron tilted her chin towards his face. Her face was flushed with embarrassment as he looked into her eyes with intensity. I would never forget our first time. That wasn't our first time. Nothing happened between us. April was going mad. She was extremely flustered. I know, I meant the first time we were so intimate. Aaron's lips curled into a smile. Why are your cheeks so hot? Are you embarrassed? There's nothing to be embarrassed about. You should get used to this sooner rather than later. She was at a loss for words and lowered her head shyly. Don't worry, April, I will be responsible for you. I won't let you down in this lifetime, Aaron said affectionately. April was taken aback. She felt a wave of emotion overwhelm her. After a while, she silently nestled her head into his chest. If she didn't like him for real, she wouldn't have gone so far with him the night before. It was going to happen anyway. She could start preparing herself. She couldn't help but think about their disparity in terms of their social standing as she lay in his arms. He came from such an impressive background, unlike her. Would they really have a happy ending? Why are you so quiet? Are you touched by what I said? Aaron leaned forward to kiss her lips. I haven't brushed my teeth. April pulled away. 
She was concerned about her stale morning breath. Neither have I. Aaron nibbled on the lobe of her ear and said seriously, April, I want you again. April turned quickly to climb out of bed, but Aaron pulled her closer with his strong arms. I don't want you, April shouted. I want you, though, Aaron whispered pitifully in her ear as he continued to kiss her fervently. My hand is sore, April protested. My hand isn't. I can do the work today. He leaped at the opportunity. Work? What work? Was he going to... Before April could reply, Aaron's hands had already crept down slyly. Don't! Don't! April stiffened up like a plank before she started writhing around. Don't? Aaron glanced at her quickly. Women are all like that. They preach one thing but act differently. She's obviously enjoying herself writhing and groaning, Aaron thought to himself. Her legs were cooperating with his advances. He loved her antics. He knew she wanted this, although she was protesting verbally, he would never have to worry about the lack of excitement in bed with her. When April let out a loud moan at the end, he insisted that she return the favor, and she was made to satisfy his needs as well. Later at the buffet, Richard had dialed Aaron's cell phone twice without any response. He cursed him in his mind. How feverish had things gotten last night for him to be knocked out until now? Or was he doing part two in the morning? Good morning, Mr. Richard. A lady sat opposite him. Jennifer was wearing a knitted turtleneck dress and carrying a baby pink coat on her arm. A pair of decorative glasses sat on the bridge of her defined nose, and she was wearing a red lip with her hair up in a bun. She looked edgy and sweet at the same time. Richard paused. He quickly put down his phone and said, Morning. Not sure what you like for breakfast, so I took a little bit of everything. These are all the healthier options. I know celebrities are hardcore calorie counters. Jennifer glanced at the table, saw black truffle, layer cakes, crab powder, fried breadsticks, sandwiches, and other dishes. Um, Mr. Richard, are you trying to gain weight? Jennifer asked in an indirect way. Richard picked himself a black truffle while saying, Is there a problem? I won't get fat by eating this. Jennifer took a sip of milk and then said, Mr. Richard, I want to talk with you about regalia. That is the plan of our splingo. You may take a look. Richard pushed the contract to her and replied, I know that Magma Group is planning on purchasing Regalia as well. To be honest, Magma Group is a film company itself, so once they purchase you, there'll be no place for the owner of Regalia. However, Splingo is different. We are intending to set foot into the entertainment circle, but we don't have any relative experiences. After purchasing you, we won't kick your boss out. On the contrary, we'll give him 20% of the shares. Jennifer was tempted. Mr. Richard, you are very frank, she said. Miss Jennifer, if you can make this happen, you'll be able to purchase Regalia's share as well. We'll sell 20% of the shares to the artists who are working for the company. Richard's pale face showed shallow dimples. Miss Jennifer, you and Rosaria Miller are competitors. If you work for the Magma Group as well, will they give you the best resources? Besides, as far as I know, there'll still be three years to go until your contract with Regalia expires. Am I right? Jennifer nodded, put the contract into her purse, and responded with, Your offer is very tempting. I'll try my best to persuade my boss. Jennifer, no wonder you were sitting so close with the people from Splingo yesterday. You're not going to help them buy Regalia, are you? Franklin's voice was suddenly heard from behind. Jennifer turned back and found Franklin and his manager standing beside her. None of your business, Jennifer said coldly. Franklin pointed at Jennifer's nose and said angrily, Good for you, Jennifer. Last night, Ms. Lily arranged for us to enter the venue together, yet I didn't even see a trace of you. And during the party, you sat together with April, and you teased me on purpose. Are you afraid that I might tell Ms. Lily about all this? Richard frowned. Jennifer abruptly stood up and responded with, Go tell him. Why should I be afraid of you? Franklin, I clearly know how many dirty tricks you've played behind my back. Besides, Mr. Richard here is much more handsome than you. He has dimples, and he looks like an innocent yet mature boy. I'm telling the truth. Do you disagree? If you do, just compare yourself with him. You? Franklin glanced at Richard. He didn't know Richard, but he knew that Richard was with Aaron last night. Don't point at her. It's impolite. Richard stood up and pushed aside Franklin's finger, which was pointing at Jennifer. He had rarely met a girl who complimented his appearance like Jennifer just did. So without a doubt, he wouldn't let anyone bully her. Jennifer, just wait and see. Franklin gave Jennifer a warning glance, then left with anger. Jennifer snorted, then sat back down and said to Richard apologetically, I'm sorry, Mr. Richard. He and I never liked each other. I can tell. Richard rubbed his chin and replied, Yesterday I saw him with Isaac. Franklin has always been quite close with the Magma Group. 
Recently, he's been accepted the job offer of a TV series which is invested in by the Magma Group. He'll be the leading actor. We have the same manager, but our manager treats him better. Episode 157. Compared with me, Isaac is just inexperienced. Jennifer shrugged. He has a huge part to play in the Magma Group's acquisition of Regalia Film. Did I forget to tell you? He holds 3% of Regalia's film shares. I get it now. Miss Jennifer is giving me an insider tip. Richard smiled happily. In the Lakeview suite, April walked out of the shower and noticed her legs were a little sore. When she checked in the bathroom, she saw a bit of her skin had chafed. Her thighs were red and angry looking. It must have been from too much friction. She wished that she could stay in the bathroom forever every time she thought about what had happened earlier. How did he have all that vitality and energy? She was baffled. They did it once last night and spent another good hour doing it this morning. They weren't even doing the real thing. They were probably would never have gotten out of bed if they had really done it. In the living room, Aaron was sprawled confidently on the sofa. It hadn't taken long for him to clean himself up. His hair was gelled and he looked energetic and radiant. When she walked into the room, she felt his piercing gaze fixed on her like a predator eyeing its prey. April, are you hungry? Aaron asked. Yeah, I'm really hungry. April let out a sigh of relief. Thank goodness he didn't say anything too embarrassing. Yes, if you had agreed to shower with me earlier, we would have saved so much time. We would have been at breakfast by now and you wouldn't be complaining about being hungry, Aaron said matter-of-factly. She had underestimated him. He was shameless, pinning his hopes on showering together after the entire morning of events. Don't you think that you should order breakfast for your lady when she tells you that she's hungry? Why did all the romantic and movie-like gestures disappear the moment they got there? You've only been taking advantage of me so far anyway, April said indignantly. She was getting upset. This was the first time she had been treated like this by a man, starved until her stomach cramped. He was still busy thinking about how to take further advantage of her. Before she realized it, tears were welling up in her eyes. Aaron had only seen her cry once before, and that was at the hospital. It all happened so quickly, he wondered if she was crying out of hunger. He was at a loss for what to do. I only raised the subject because I was afraid that you would be hungry. April glared at him. He was still going on about his lies. Aaron looked away sheepishly and stood up. I'll call the restaurant and ask them to deliver breakfast. It's so ridiculous that they don't offer room service here, especially for the price we paid for this suite. How can they starve my girl like this? We're never coming back here again. He started dialing their number on the in-room telephone. When the line connected, he started scolding the receptionist on the other end before she could even greet him. The girl replied hesitantly, I thought you instructed us not to deliver breakfast this morning and not to disturb your rest. Fine, I'll let it go since you've realized your mistake. Don't commit this kind of error again. Bring breakfast up. My girlfriend is starving. He hung up before the receptionist could say another word. He looked up and said, The hotel said that they will be delivering food very soon. Don't be mad at me anymore. If you're really hungry, there are instant noodles here. I can make some for you. She wasn't so hungry, but was instead mad at him. Ignoring him, she turned and poured herself a glass of warm water. April. Aaron walked to her, looking down at her with a serious expression, saying, I didn't break my promise. I didn't... All right, stop it. April interrupted him. If he continued, she would blush again. Why? Are you shy? Aaron held her hands, snorted, and continued. Last night, when you carried me in your arms, why weren't you shy? And you told me that you were my elder sister. What kind of sister would hold her brother and moan like that? April threw off his hands and covered her own face. If she knew that he would remember everything, even when he was drunk, she would never do what she did last night. All right, enough of that. She changed the topic. Last night, Mr. Newman talked about Isaac and my family. How does he know those details? Did you tell him? Of course. April replied. We need more people to know how much harm you've suffered so that they'll find out that Isaac is a hypocrite. He'll fall into disrepute. If everyone knows that he's a backstabber, who will believe him? And who will be willing to cooperate with him? I really do admire you. Last night you made it so real. April gave Aaron a thumbs up saying, Isaac was so angry at you last night. You alone are as powerful as a company. You're wrong. My old company in the army is rather strong. I'm not comparable to it. Aaron talked humbly, yet his face wore an obvious proud look. Compared with me, Isaac is just inexperienced. If the party didn't end so soon, he would make Isaac kneel on the ground and beg for mercy. Aaron hated Isaac because the latter used to date his woman. This hatred would last even after he died. But of course, he couldn't tell April so because if he did, she might see him as a narrow-minded man. April, were you happy last night? 
What happened last night was just an appetizer. Aaron held April's hands and then said, He destroyed you once, so I'm going to make him pay for that bit by bit. Unfortunately, I can't destroy Isaac and Rosaria right away. I wanted to finish Rosaria as soon as possible, but I didn't think that Isaac had been protecting her that well throughout the years. There's no damaging information about her, and she's never been played by any hidden rule. She went all the way straight to the top with the support of the Magma Group. Enough! April waved a hand. Once hearing Rosaria's name, she felt a fire burning inside her heart. Are you jealous of Rosaria? Aaron's voice suddenly became cold. April was startled by him. Why should I be jealous of her? She said. I'm just mad because I lost to someone like that. Hearing that, Aaron showed a better look, saying, There's no winning and losing. After all, Isaac is problematic. That's true. April nodded and said, Last night we sat next to Isaac. You told the organizer to arrange the seats that way, didn't you? Yes, he responded. April sighed and continued, He was so angry last night. I guess he believed that he could keep controlling me and bullying me, but never thought that I could meet someone better than him. Aaron smiled and stayed silent. His woman was smart and a good student, but her EQ was a mess. Isaac wasn't only angry last night. Most importantly, he was sad. However, April didn't notice how pale his face was. Episode 158 You Look Like Someone from the Comic Books It was for the best that April didn't know. Aaron would allow her to believe that Isaac had been manipulating her from the start and never once liked her. After about ten minutes, the waiter served the room service breakfast order. It was the most luxurious set in the hotel with a large variety and large portion size. April was famished. She then proceeded to gobble down a sunny side up egg, a slice of bacon, a glass of milk, and a bowl of fruit salad. After her tummy was full and satisfied, she looked up to catch Aaron staring at her with a strange expression. She blushed and said, What are you looking at? Don't you already know about my voracious appetite? It's already 10 o'clock. I usually have my breakfast much earlier at 7. It's all right to eat more. I can afford it anyway. Aaron sipped his coffee casually. I'm more curious about the reason behind why you have such poor stamina in bed despite your excessive diet. Aaron blinked innocently. You're always saying that you're tired and you don't have the strength. Shut up. Stop right there. April's ears were turning red and she quickly stuffed a piece of bread into his gaping mouth. If she didn't stop him then, she was sure that he would reenact the entire dialogue. Aaron continued after chewing. Seems like diet isn't the problem here. You need more exercise. I think I have to move in with you after all. We can wake up at six in the morning to exercise together. If you have a problem with that, we can do it at night as well. I can bend my schedule around yours. April said with frustration. I've only just moved in with Winnie. How inconvenient would it be for her if you moved in? Exercise every day? She would never believe him if he said he meant normal exercising. That's true. You do scream very loudly. It'll be awkward if Winnie hears you. You have two choices. Move out and stay with me or ask Winnie to move out. I would rent a luxurious mansion for her, Aaron said seriously. Fat chance, April said simply. She realized that she shouldn't even give this man a taste of goodness. It would just leave him wanting more and more. Who was screaming loudly? <sighs> she wanted to punch him. You've said so much. Are you just trying to get me to do that with you every morning? April glared at him. Who says? Aaron denied promptly. I do like what we did last night as well. April was really resisting the urge to punch him. What's the difference between what we did last night and this morning? Of course there's a difference. Aaron answered her seriously. One was with hands, the other with legs. It's a different kind of excitement. I can't be bothered to talk to you. I'm going to use the bathroom. April was going to explode with embarrassment. As she walked towards the bathroom, Aaron called out behind her. If you poop after you eat and eat right after you poop, that will make you resemble a certain animal. I like that, though. April stomped her foot in despair and chose to ignore him. What a swine with such a low EQ. Couldn't he tell that she was hiding in the bathroom out of embarrassment? When she emerged from the bathroom, she didn't feel like talking to him anymore. She fiddled with her phone with her head down. Did I do something wrong? Aaron sounded confused and earnest. Is it because I talked about the hands and the legs? Let's go find Brother Richard. He must be pretty bored by himself by now. April interrupted him and changed the topic. She had had enough of talking about the hands and the legs. Why do you care about his feelings? You're my woman. Aaron frowned with discontent and said, Besides, isn't Jennifer with him? Even that can make him unhappy. He's so sensitive. She closed her eyes to recall what he did for her last night, then forced a smile and explained, 
Last night, Jennifer told me that she needed to work in the morning at 10, so I guess she has left by now. So what? Richard can spend some time alone. He's got friends in here anyway, said Aaron. We're flying back tonight, so where should we hang out? April sighed and then said, If you keep doing this, sooner or later, you'll have no friends. That's not going to happen. Richard won't leave me, not even if I made him, he said. If one day he tried to leave, what would you do? She asked. He wouldn't dare, he replied. April silently picked up her purse and then said, Anyhow, let's go find him. Aaron seemed to be pretty unhappy, but still he followed April out. While walking out, Aaron took out his phone and found that Richard had called him. As he prepared to call him back and ask where he was, he suddenly saw Richard in the corridor before him, facing a mirror, baring his teeth while turning his face from time to time to observe himself. Richard, what are you doing? April walked up and asked curiously. I just found that I have a pair of dimples. Richard responded happily as if he had discovered a new world. I looked in the mirror just now and found that I'm pretty handsome. April felt that Richard was acting so much like Aaron right now. Aaron frowned and said, Are you sick? Let me send you to a hospital. April gave Aaron an angry stare. You're even sicker, so how could you say that to Richard? Richard, haven't you always had dimples? Your smile is amiable and you look like a boy from a landscape painting. I do? Richard's eyes glowed. Recently, little Benny has been depreciating me too cruelly. I was upset, but after hearing what you said, I'm confident again. Hearing that, April understood him. Indeed, living under Aaron's mean words wasn't an easy thing. How was your talk with Jennifer? She asked. Not bad, Richard nodded and said. Our offer is way better than the Magna Group's. Don't worry, this time the Magma Group won't have a chance. Richard, we're going to hang out. Do you want to come? April gently invited him to hang out with her and Aaron. Richard was going to nod, but before doing so, he suddenly received a gaze from beside him, which contained a feeling of strong hostility. He was so frightened that even his tongue twitched. I don't think so, he said. I still have something to do. You go. Later we'll have dinner together and then head to the airport. All right, then. After going separate ways from Richard, Aaron suddenly turned back to glare at April with a grumpy look and then asked, A boy from a landscape painting? How could you compliment another man like that in front of me? I've never heard you use such nice words on me. April sighed. Ever since he became her boyfriend, she felt that he was turning younger and younger. Are you still a boy? She asked. Aaron opened his mouth but didn't say anything. Of course he was a boy. However, admitting that he was a 29-year-old boy would be shameful. All right, you said that he looks like a boy from a landscape painting. Then what kind of paint am I from? Tell me, seriously, he said. April struggled for a moment. She raised her head to look at his perfectly handsome face and then said, You look like someone from the comic books. The boys from landscape paintings are clean looking, but the men from comic books are the dram of all girls. Episode 159. I want to be like a normal couple with you. Aaron was stunned. All the men in comics are hot-blooded. April frowned. I'm not talking about the kind of comics that men read. I'm talking about girly comics. That's enough. Go figure it out yourself. She walked forward quickly with a light step. Aaron frowned. Women like to put up an air of mystery around them. He had never read a youth comic before. He might not even fully understand or appreciate it. He quickly caught up with her. Where do you want to go? I've been to many places here before. There's nothing in particular that I want to see or do. We could go to Disneyland. I've never been there before. April suggested. What's so fun about Disneyland? Aaron knitted his brows. It's the weekend and it will be so crowded. You are quite peculiar. Girls your age are always thinking about going to malls to shop. No one enjoys the amusement park anymore. You seem to know women quite well, April said with a tense smile. I'm talking about my friends. Every time I try to ask them out, they tell me that they have to accompany their girlfriends to go shopping. Aaron looked at her with a desperation. April, you never ever want to spend my money. What will I do with all that money? Leave it for my children? Then you'll really have to give birth to a lot of them. April blushed. She couldn't believe he was talking to her about childbearing again. His conversations always leaped to topics related to that. I haven't liked shopping since I was young. I'm happy as long as I have enough to clothe myself. I enjoy things with my loved ones that we both enjoy, April said cheekily as she grabbed his arm. When she said, my loved ones, Aaron felt butterflies in his stomach. All right then, he didn't mind compromising since she loved him so much. On the way there in the company car, Aaron texted Sylvia, what kind of guys are the male leads in youth comics? Sylvia answered, extremely handsome and dashing. Aaron glanced over at April who was sitting next to him and grinned cockily. Why are you looking at me like that? 
April felt uncomfortable being stared at like that. No reason. Aaron turned away. She thought that he was extremely handsome and dashing. Forget it. He would not hold it against Richard for acting like a child. At Disneyland, the chauffeur bought them express tickets to save them from waiting in line. Aaron studied the pamphlet and highlighted a couple of exciting rides. He suggested them to April, and unlike other cowardly girls, she gladly agreed to check them out. She was thrilled by the rides and emerged from every attraction more adrenaline pumped than before. Aaron was unhappy. After emerging from soaring over the horizon, he realized that most of the tourists in line were happy couples hugging each other tightly, sharing drinks and holding hands. They were taking their time to enjoy each other's presence in the long line. He frowned, and when they arrived at the next roller coaster, he grabbed her hand and said, Let's go wait in line. Why? The line is so long. We bought express tickets for a reason. April was flabbergasted. I want to experience the life of an average Joe. April was speechless. The people in line would probably beat him up if they heard him. <laughs> Whatever, but I think the line takes about 40 to 50 minutes. Are you mentally prepared? Yes. Before they started waiting in line, he bought her an ice cream cone and refused to buy one for himself, despite April asking him repeatedly. As they waited in line, he was happily licking her ice cream cone. Didn't you say that you don't want it? April didn't understand. Aaron smiled and responded, I like to taste your saliva. Hearing what he said, the couple next to them immediately turned to them with a weird look. April blushed instantly. The people waiting in line were pretty close to each other, yet he didn't lower his voice at all. Here, you have it. I don't want it anymore. April pushed the ice cream to him. Aaron refused and said, Why would I eat it if there's none of your saliva on it? I don't even like ice cream. April didn't know what to say. She believed that no one else could make the saliva eating thing sound so reasonable. After finishing the ice cream, Aaron suggested, Let's take selfies. You see, many couples are doing it. We don't even have couple pictures. While speaking, he took out her phone and started taking selfies. At first, they leaned their heads together and slowly they put their faces together. Afterward, Aaron told April to kiss his cheek and at last he directly ordered her to kiss his lips. April couldn't do it as she felt that more and more people were looking at them. Both of them were good looking, especially him who was tall and well-dressed. He looked outstanding in the line that since he started waiting in the queue, many girls had already been sneakily looking at him. At that moment, almost everyone was eyeing him and April. All right, stop taking pictures. Everyone's looking at us. April pulled his hands down and said in a low voice, We'll take kissing pictures after going back, all right? I'm used to getting stared at since childhood, Aaron said carelessly. However, her soft tone of speaking nearly melted his heart. We'll take the pictures after going back. That's a deal. Now let's check the pictures we just took. He put his hands under her arms, then held her and checked the pictures together with her. This one is good. So is this one. You're pretty in this picture and in this one. Hearing him, April blushed again. No, she said. I don't think this one is good enough. I don't look good enough in the cheek kissing one. Don't be strict with yourself. I said that you're pretty, so you are. I allow you to choose one from these pictures for your screen. After saying that, Aaron began struggling. But which one? I look perfect in every picture. I didn't notice it before, but now I find that being perfect can be annoying sometimes. You allowed that, but I didn't agree, did I? Asked April. Aaron ignored her and said, This one. I'll set your screensaver preference for you. April was speechless. She found that in addition to his narcissism, he now had a new skill that allowed him to completely ignore what others said. Forty minutes later, they were still waiting in line. April even got sore legs, so she couldn't help but complain. We got a free pass, so why are we waiting here? I really want to sit down somewhere. You're being spoiled by me, Aaron smiled and said. The others with general tickets are all still waiting, aren't they? April paused briefly and then felt that he was right. If she didn't come here with Aaron, would she ever be willing to pay for such expensive tickets? If he wasn't with her, she would still be waiting in the line. However, as he was always with her, she had gotten used to receiving preferential treatment anywhere she went. Aaron embraced her, but his lips near her ear and said, I wait here in the line because I want to be like a normal couple with you. You see, there are many young couples. I want to learn from them and I want to know how college students date. Knowing that, April was touched. She sensed a warmth from her heart. She stopped complaining and silently put her arms around his waist. When he was around 20 years old, he was having a rough time in the army. In university in the United States, he needed to work hard because he was having a fresh start. Episode 160. What's going on? Are you having a fight? Aaron, can I ask you something? April looked up suddenly. Have you had a girlfriend before? 
Aaron looked her in the eye for a while before pinching her cheek. Women, what a hassle. You guys get so hung up on all our exes. April peeled his hand off her face as if he didn't mind her ex. Answer my question. Why do you ask suddenly? Aaron smiled cheekily. Of course I've had a girlfriend before. Oh. Although she had already guessed his answer, she still felt uncomfortable and bummed. It was normal, of course. He was already 29 years old. If he had never had a girlfriend before, she would think that he was abnormal. I dated when I was in the military. Aaron paused to think and continued. I was way too swamped back then. We didn't get to see each other much. About twice a year. We mainly communicated through phone calls. So, you know, he didn't have a chance to do all of that with his ex. He was still a virgin. He couldn't say it in a straightforward manner as he felt mildly ashamed. However, April didn't get the memo and continued to probe. You can hold prolonged conversations on the phone. You are quite the conversation killer. We talked about war strategies, fighting techniques, Aaron said nonchalantly. That was one solid gal. If it were April, she would have hung up instantly once he started talking about boring strategies. She could tell that the girl really liked him. April asked after a long pause, Do you still love her? She looked him in the eye as she waited intently for his reply. When you fall in love with someone, you become a very petty person. Not anymore. Aaron wrapped his hands around her bottom and smiled gently. Your cute angry face fills my heart and soul completely. There's no space for anything else now. April frowned. Cute angry face? The hell? She couldn't believe that he had been thinking about it all this time. Shouldn't you say that I completely fill your heart and soul? Why are you always thinking about those things? April said through gritted teeth. Also, will you stop groping me like this in public? You said that your legs were sore. I just wanted to give you a hand. Aaron looked shocked before chuckling. It doesn't make sense that I'm filled by you. Before April could fully understand what he was saying, his sly smile had already given it all away. You can't fill me up, right? Aaron looked downwards at her nether area and said thoughtfully, Only I can fill you up, perfectly and tightly. April's blood was bubbling and her ears were hot. I meant your heart. Oh, really? You didn't make yourself clear, Aaron said affectionately. I misunderstood your intent. April was in disrepair. She wanted to bite her tongue off. She knew he was a dirty and horny man. That's good, though. You fill my heart, and I fill your body. Aaron smiled gently. He wanted to gobble her up alive. April kept quiet. She was wrong. She shouldn't have asked him about his ex. Now she wished that she could dig a hole for herself. She gave up trying to resist him, and he continued to hug her with his hands on her butt. He held her to his body all the way to the end of the line when they boarded the roller coaster. It had been a full 20 minutes and April was impressed by his resilience. They spent the whole day at Disneyland. They only left the place at about 6 in the evening. They had to miss the nighttime fireworks as they had a plane to catch at 9. April felt slightly regretful that they had to miss such a romantic opportunity. On their way back, Aaron comforted her. It's all right, I'll build you an amusement park in the future. April smiled and leaned against his chest tiredly. They played the whole day, so she felt like her legs were nearly broken. She hadn't been so happy for a long time. During her college time in Rosewood City, she had only been to the amusement park once with her roommates at Annie's birthday. However, back at that time, she had her mind stuffed with how to regain a position in the voice acting industry, with her father and Isaac preventing that. Once again, she thought about Kenneth. Suddenly, she felt guilty. These days, because of Aaron, she had barely thought about how rough Kenneth's life might be like in prison. She didn't dare visit her father in the prison frequently as she worried that Isaac might find her. During the summer vacation, she visited her father only once in a disguise. Aaron, she abruptly raised her face. What? Aaron looked at April, who seemed to have spoken but stopped on a second thought. Are you still thinking about the fireworks? No, I'm thinking about my father, said April in a complicated tone. Aaron pressed his lips together, staying silent. April's heart sank, but still she sat up from his arms, made up her mind, and said, Can I ask you a favor? This is more important than revenge on Rosaria and Isaac. You want me to save your father? Aaron raised his brows. His tone and expression slowly turned serious. Can you let me explain? They hadn't been together for long, but April knew him well enough. As a rich and powerful man, he would never let his wealth and power become the reason for him to do whatever he wanted. He was upright, and he obeyed the laws. No matter how much he loved someone, he wouldn't violate the law and his own principles for this person. My father went to prison because Isaac testified against him in court. 
Isaac claimed that one day he saw a female student come out of my father's office with her clothes half torn off. April clenched her teeth and said, If that testimony was from someone else, I might believe it, but it wasn't. It came from Isaac, who hates our family. I have many doubts, so I want you to investigate it again. Aaron slightly frowned. A while later, he said, You might be right. If the case really has some problems, I'll do whatever I can to clear your father's name, but if it's real... April was more or less disappointed. Aaron's reaction was reasonable, though. After all, he didn't know Kenneth, so he didn't believe in him completely, and that was absolutely normal. For any case, one witness's testimony can't be the only evidence to substantiate the prison sentence, explained Aaron helplessly. There must be other witnesses and all sorts of evidence. But of course, all of that can be faked. Anyway, April, I don't want to lie for you. I only believe in evidence. But I'll dig into it for you. Thank you. April forced a smile. She had said thank you to him many times, but this time Aaron detected that her thank you was different from what she said before. It sounded too polite. He felt a little uncomfortable and he didn't know what to say. The chauffeur drove to pick up Richard. Richard got into the car and immediately sensed the weird atmosphere in the car. He was smart enough not to make a joke as he usually would. After dinner, they headed to the airport. In the restroom, he took the opportunity to ask Aaron about it as April went to the bathroom. What's going on with you two? Are you having a fight? Not really, Aaron told him. The whole story was simple words.